Oh, what's that? It's just for the visual content. Oh, black. Yeah, I can start off. Okay. Amateur. It's real amateur hours. Got about a minute left. Okay. You need to get your wife out. So. Two teams that sport identical records meet today in Chile, Joliet, St. Francis, and Missouri Baptist. Both host a 2-6 and six record and 1-3 and three in the Midwest. Pre-game talk with head coach Joe Curry is next on the USF Sports TV Network. Loyola Medicine is the official health care provider for the Fighting Saints. We're committed to sports injury prevention, maintaining the health and nutrition of young athletes, and optimizing training and conditioning. Our team includes fellowship-trained orthopedic surgeons, primary care and emergency medicine physicians, licensed physical therapists, and certified athletic trainers. Our sports medicine program offers day, evening, and weekend availabilities. Caring for body and soul is unique, and it's uniquely Loyola. And good afternoon, my name's Nick and uh, this is Coach Lee here. It's week number nine of the St. Francis football season. The Saints and Missouri Baptist here today. And when you look at Missouri Baptist on the schedule, the last couple of times that they played the Spartans here, Coach, it was 45-7, it was 38-14. But the thing about that was that was three years ago. It's been a while since we saw the Spartans here in Joliet. And since then, they got a pretty good quarterback and a really good wide receiver, and that might be a problem here for the Saints. This is not your father's Moab team. Uh, you know, they'll put the ball in the air. They've got two top ten offensive players with the quarterback, the wide receiver. It could be explosive today here in Joliet. And the offense for Missouri Baptist, number 12 in terms of yardage. So a lot to handle. Let's talk about it with head coach Joe Curry here. And uh, coach, before we get to Major Denman and Chris Peters, a couple guys we want to talk to you about, yep. let's talk about defending a team like Missouri Baptist, very, very pass heavy. What are you guys going to do defensively to try to slow them down? Encourage the run. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, we're going to at times leave the box a little bit light. Um, you know, it might, you know, might, might leave us susceptible to some things in the running game, but we're going to do some things to, uh, to encourage them to run the ball. Um, we're going to double team number 12 in the pass. Um, he's a he's a great receiver. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Alexis Jackson back in the day. So that's scary enough saying right there. Um, but uh, no, we got some things up our sleeve, and you know we'll see how they work out today. Well, one of those guys is going to be charged with slowing them down is going to be Chris Peters on the defensive side of the ball. He's been outstanding, 11 tackles for a loss. He leads the team in that category in sacks. Just talk about how he's uh, come on here lately. Well, Chris Peters, I, I, I told him a couple weeks ago, I, I couldn't be more prouder of the guy. He's, uh, it, for those that don't know, Chris Peters came in here, you know, heavily recruited out of high school and played as a true freshman, played as a sophomore. And then, you know, quite frankly, as a junior, you know, he, he didn't play at all. And uh, I think he was kind of surprised that he didn't play as a junior. And um, so he kind of took a red shirt last year. And this year he's been nothing short of spectacular. And I think that's kind of lit a fire underneath him. And he's come out this year and been our most uh, productive defensive lineman and um, has a great motor and is making plays. And hopefully that keeps going for us. No, I'll thank you. I like the way you guys have ran the ball, especially the last four games, averaging about 280 yards with the two-headed monster with Deadman and Milton. How's that go in your game plan, knowing that you got that in your back pocket, you can go to that any time? Well, that is our game plan. I mean, we're we're a run-heavy team, and you know, not to mention we got a pretty good offensive line who's moving some people too. So, you know, we're leaning heavily on those guys, and uh, um, 
you know, and, and, and Dwayne and, and Major, and, and Major's really good in the running game. And, you know, we've just tried to lean heavily on the running game while steadily trying to improve the passing game a little bit here and there each week. And, you know, I think we've done that. Um, you know, we've been able to get some plays here in recent weeks. Now, last week it was, a, you know, a not a good day for passing, obviously. But, um, you know, we, we feel like we've improved there as well. So that's the task. We're going to rely on our running game and, and try to improve in the passing game week to week. How, like maybe a percentage-wise, when it comes to Major Deadman and how he runs the ball, how many of those are called quarterback runs and how many of those are him improvising? Everything's a read. So he's reading somebody and it tells him to give or keep, you know. Now, you know, through Coach and Major throughout the year, you know, Coach McCarthy, our offensive coordinator, has kind of said, if you can beat him, beat him. You know, that kind of is, is a lot different than the way you coach any other quarterback. So, um, and, and Major's often right in if he beats him or not, you know. So, uh, and that's that's the challenge. It, it challenges the defense to whenever we have a read play on between Major and, and Dwayne, which is a ton of the time, um, you know, they have to be disciplined to tackle the dive every play and to tackle the quarterback and not only have somebody there, but be in position to make a play with two pretty good athletic guys who can jump cut one way or the other and make you miss half the time. Even if you have your assignment correct, they're going to make you miss half the time anyway. So it's frustrating as a defense to be able to have people there to be able to, you know, make those plays and not be able to make them. So, and that's a good thing for us that we have on offense. So we're going to see everybody out there today. Uh, yeah, I believe so. I believe so. Major has a little bit of a – he's he was limited in practice this week. He's got a little bit of an ankle injury from last week. But uh, he's going to start for us today, and, you know, we'll see how he rolls from there. And, you know, everybody else should be good to go. Dwayne has a little bit of a hip pointer, but – He's he's got three games left that he's guaranteed, so he's gonna play. He's, he's been activated then. He has been activated. Right. Yes. <laughs> Go right. get him. Thanks, right. guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, coach. Your classic run versus pass here. St. Francis is gonna run the football. We know Missouri Baptist is gonna pass it. The key for the Saints, in my opinion, here, don't go down early because if you get down early, it's gonna be tough to get back. They don't have the offense for that, but. I'll tell you what, boys and girls, it's November, it's football time. I even brought the lucky victory <laughs> hat today, so I'm feeling good about this one today. Let's go get a V here today. Kick off just around the corner on the USF Sports TV Network. There's a call to be answered. Time is still on your side. Pads still feel good. The spirit of competition is still alive inside. The desire still drives. A new team welcomes you and challenges you. There's always room to grow. The phrase student athlete has a great ring to it. Lasting friendships are ready to be made. You just want to keep playing. Game on. Get in the game at playnaia.org. Good afternoon, football fans. My name is Nick Jacobs, Lee Turnbow with you high atop Memorial Stadium, week number nine of the Saints football season as they welcome in the two and six Missouri Baptist Spartans. The similarities between these two teams, coach, are rather striking, and it doesn't, it goes past just the records. Both teams are two and six. Both teams are one and three in the conference, but it goes a little bit deeper than that, even when you start digging into some of the statistics. You can mirror this forever, and listen to this. This is no lie, folks. Both teams 0-3 at home. Both teams 2-3 and in the road. Common opponents. Both teams have beat Trinity International. Both teams have uh, lost to Olivet and St. Xavier. Scoring offense. Mo Bapp, 23 points. St. <laughs> Francis, 22. Passing offense, Mo Bapp. Rushing offense, St. Francis. That's where it's going to go. If you look at the turnover margin, both teams are minus eight. If you look at third down conversion rate, both teams are averaging 37% completion on third down. 
So it's going to come down to this game, Nick, it's going to come down to if Mo Bant can pass the ball better than St. Francis, we can run the football. Who is going to uh, determine this? Who's going to have the stronger will offensively? And, and when it comes to the Saints trying to slow them down, we've seen the passing offense really been trouble for St. Francis defense, that 3-3-5 defense that they run, and the quality of quarterback that they played in the MSFA has really uh, has been an issue. They give up 280 yards of passing offense uh, a game, and that is where Missouri Baptist thrives. So it just seems on paper that this defense really is going to have to do something special to, to slow down the Spartan passing game. You got to do that, but it seems like every quarterback that comes in here, and we've seen this year, has been on the money. It seems like the guy's got 90% completion rate. He's just throwing dimes all over the field. And you watch him on film, they put balls in the dirt. Now when they come here to Memorial Stadium, they're hitting the receivers right in stride. The last time St. Francis has seen Missouri Baptist was 2016. This is the third meeting between these two teams as the captains meet at, uh, at midfield right now. St. Francis has won the previous two, but that was a long time ago, Coach. It was 2015, the first time they met the season opener. St. Francis won that one 45-7. And the second and last meeting was uh, early in the 2016 season, a St. Francis 38-14 victory there. But since then, they have a guy named John Lux, who is a sophomore out of Brownsburg, Indiana. He is their starting quarterback. Get a load of these numbers. 52% through the air, 1,965 yards, 14 touchdowns. He went over 500 yards passing a few weeks ago. And two weeks ago, they that was their last game against St. Xavier. They're coming off the bye. Missouri Baptist put 512 yards on St. Xavier, the number 13 team in the country. The bottom line is, like we mentioned uh, before our interview with Coach Curry, this is not the same Spartan team the St. Francis fans has seen a few years ago. I mean, you put 500 yards of <laughs> offense against Mike Feminist's defensive mm -hmm. team over at St. X, that's Saints on. And of course, he's got a, a stud receiver, Isaiah King, to throw to. That guy's just lighting up the number board as well. Jason Baraniak is in his sixth year coaching Missouri Baptist. He is 13 and 49. He is the one who started that program back in 2014 when they went 1 and 10 in that inaugural year. He played as a grad assistant at the University of Colorado, the uh, the Bison out there, and then bounced between McKendry College and Belleville West High School in the St. Louis area for a few years before. Uh, taking the head coaching job here at Missouri Baptist. And after uh, a few struggling years, it seems like they have uh, turned things around and becoming quite competitive in the MSFA. St. Francis won the toss. They will defer Missouri Baptist offense, that high-flying offense. will get the ball first when we get things going. But as we talk about Missouri Baptist and their running game, we have to talk about St. Francis and their ground attack. 1,560 yards, which is ninth in the NAIA. 223 yards per game uh, on the ground between Dwayne Milton, the tailback, between uh, the freshman quarterback, Major Dedman and company. That uh, is best in the MSFA. Uh, as good as Missouri Baptist passing game is, that's how good St. Francis's running game is. So what kind of football do you like? We're going to have it all here. Do you like a ground and pound game that St. Francis is going to give you? Or do you like the Missouri Baptist style, uh, you know, high flying offense? It really, it's, it's really going to be an interesting way to see how this shakes out. And really what it comes down to is which defense is better at stopping what the other team does well. That's correct. And I like the way that St. Francis, we're trending. The last four games, we've averaged 280 yards a game rushing the football. We know that Deadman does a great job. We know Milton's been on fire. And the thing that's going to be a key factor in this game as we watch this, the wind is a crosswind here at Memorial Stadium. Usually it blows north and south. Now it's east and west. So that could affect Missouri Baptist's passing game today. If you look at the numbers, Missouri Baptist defense has performed better statistically than St. Francis offense, but they also have not played quite the schedule that the Saints have, which we can talk about after the Star Spangled Banner played here at Memorial Stadium.
Up the, off the skill players bundled up the offensive linemen in the short sleeves here today. It's 44 degrees with a wind chill of 37. The wind will be a factor today out of the west at around 16 miles an hour. It is a cool, crisp, partly sunny, we'll go mostly sunny autumn day here in Joliet. I'd like to welcome all the fans watching down in St. Louis, Missouri, Baptist country. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Hopefully you enjoy the game here today. 15 on the clock, ready to get this one underway. It is week number nine. Identical records. One team likes to throw, one team likes to run. It should be a fun one here today. Missouri Baptist coming off uh, a late season bye week. That can only help them as they prepare to stop Major Deadman and company. Freshman quarterback out of Freeport, Illinois, Freeport High School, the Pretzels. I love that nickname. Great. Always, always did. There is another another Pretzels uh, mascot in the state of Illinois. Do you know where that is located? I do not. New Berlin, Illinois, down around Springfield. Uh, New Berlin Pretzels as well. You Josh know, walking out. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> as, as the ball falls <laughs> off the team. Walking out, you know, the officials walk out about an hour before the game, check everything, make sure. And six of the officials have jackets on. And the back judge is out in his regular attire. And I said, what's the deal? I said, are you somebody special? He says, no. He says, I'm a farm boy. I'm used to this. These other guys are sissies. So I don't know how tough this efficient crew is, but I thought that was, a, that was kind of funny. Josh Holberry will kick off to Missouri Baptist. Mike Malone, number one in the country in kick return yards. Standing back at the two-yard line for the Spartans. With the wind behind him, it's still a short kick. Return will be from the 19-yard line for the Spartans. Up to about the 35, a 16 yard return from Terrell Powell out of St. Louis. We'll get to check out John Lux in that golden arm, a sophomore from Brownsburg, Illinois, nearing 2,000 yards, 14 touchdowns, but also 12 interceptions. He has uh, thrown a few picks. He's ninth in total offense individually in the NAIA. Five spots ahead of Alex Martinez, the quarterback for St. Xavier, who we saw last week. He'll start under center. We got ourselves an eye formation here, Coach. Should we get a picture of oh, There we go. Much better. <laughs> and we're going to get a false start to start the game from Missouri Baptist. And I want to see what St. Francis does with Isaiah King, their best wide receiver for Missouri Baptist. I don't know if they're going to double cover him. They're going to bracket him. I don't know. But they're going to probably tilt their coverage towards him. Let's see how they do in this uh, opening series. And we heard from Coach Curry. They're going to double team number 12 out there. That's Isaiah King, a senior wide receiver from Belleville East in the St. Louis area. Fifth most receiving yards in the country, and he is split wide left as they shift out of that I formation into the shotgun. Trips tight to the right side for Lux. They're going to run it on the first play here to Kendall Davis. Oh! He's lit up right at the 33-yard line. That's a pickup, uh, make that the 34, a pickup of four yards. And we're going to have to have a great support system from our secondary. That time, Rio Strama came up from the safety on that outside run, came downhill and made that tackle for a short gain. Keep an eye on that man, number 12, the reigning conference offensive player of the week, Isaiah King. Looks in the pistol this time. Three down lineman for St. Francis. They're going to throw the screen out left side. The chase is on and a pick up about three yards before he's wrapped up on the outside by St. Francis. Brandon Gibbs, the freshman DB, making the tackle. Oh, I take that back. It was Grubin. That brings up third down and seven from Missouri Baptist opening drive. Now, usually third and seven, you're going to look for your best player with your best play. So look for yep. King to be targeted here. He will be double teamed all game long. And Coach Curry says they will be encouraging the run. So that means your corners are going to be off the receivers. Linebackers maybe a few steps back, but they were actually in the box here. Set up. Makes a snap, turn, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper. He's got the edge. A nice nice block, play. He got through the block. Heck of a play by Rio Strama. 
The junior safety coming up and making the stick and forcing the punt situation. That's a great play by Rio. Second time in this series, he's come up from a safety position, come downhill, and made the play. I thought he was blocked Support, there, Coach. Listen, watch this from the bottom of your screen, comes up, and he'll get inside that blocker, fight through the blocker, and make that play. Jordan Benavides, the running back with the whiffed block on that one from Missouri Baptist. That forces a three and out. R.J. Williams back to return. Let's see if they try to go for a block here. Nope, they're going to cover. Punt is away into a win, but high. That's a beauty. Get away from it. Oh, and it takes a moment. Oh. Bounce, and it'll be down inside the five. That is a well-done punt by Josh Munn, a freshman from Walters, Oklahoma. That was into the wind. Oh, get a win behind that. This guy's going to be booting him 55-60. Well, the reason he got that nice bounce is because he kicked the spiral. He got through that ball, cut through the wind. Watch it. It's a kick, and he did the right thing. We did the right thing by getting away from him. But watch where it hits right there about on the 16 and takes it and just deads. Just deads. I, I just, it, your special teams guy, you're like, oh, man, you should have picked it up. No, you did the right thing. Linebacker. Ready to attack here at the hard count. Here's Major Denman, the freshman quarterback. They're going to give to Dwayne. He finds a hole right in the middle of the field, and the race is on. This started at the four. Can he outrace the coverage? 30, 25, chase down at the 21-yard line, and that is a way to start a game for Dwayne Milton. He goes 74 yards, I believe, on the first play of the game. He got great seal blocks by the left side of the offensive line for St. Francis. Watch this. Seal right there by left tackle. Look at that. Nice job. And look at Milton. Gets through there. He gets to the second level, and there's nobody there. Now, tomorrow morning when we watch films, are you serious? Give me some afterburner <laughs> speed here, would you? And they're trying to get to the line quickly here, but the sticks were not nearly set. They snapped the ball in the... Uh the down markers are back in midfield. <laughs> that's a long way. <laughs> They're like, come on. For the chain gang to run, that's a long way to go for those guys. Dwayne Mill going to get a, a bit of a breather here. You think he's mad he didn't take it to the house? Well, he's going to get uh, ribbed tomorrow during film. Yes, he will. <laughs> you call yourself a tailback and you can't close it out. <laughs> Parade Barberin will step in a tailback here with Major Denman, the quarterback. Three wide receivers right, one to the left here. Hard count, they'll check the sideline again. Snap to Major, handoff to Pere. He'll try to sneak through the line, but not in a lot of room there. He'll only pick up one to the 20-yard line. You know, I, I love offensive linemen. I know old, old offensive linemen. But if you take a look at our offensive linemen, we just got a pancake block right there. And watch 55 right here. Watch him finish this block right there. <laughs> All right, and he puts his hands up. I didn't hold him. I'm Derek, good. It's Derek Wentworth, the sophomore from Manuka. Who, by the way, 10-0 now. The Indians are from Manuka High School in the playoffs here in Illinois. Nice read by Major, trying to bounce it outside. Cut off before he reaches the 15-yard line. A pickup of four. Third down and about three here for the Saints. We always talk about Major. He doesn't really have explosive moves. He's got that rustling in him where he, he you know, some guy's going to try to shoot on his leg, and he just moves the leg out of the way, and it just makes it look so smooth and silky. Keep an eye for Brandon Ruffin. He's slot left. Malik Roberts to his left. Dan Getch, wide left. Barber in motion. It's a draw play. Denman to the five. Cuts it back inside. Looking for the goal line. He's a yard shy. First and goal for the Saints. And they're doing it on the ground as they've been doing all season long. They've had to see something in the films because there's some nice seams here by offensive line as they run quickly again. Dwayne Milton back in the game. Milton with nine touchdowns right now. He'll take a step to his right, get the ball, dive play. Did he get stopped? I think he did. No signal yet, they will call him down here. Second down and goal from about the one foot line. Second goal. Milton now over 900 yards on the season. There's the snap. Give to Dwayne. He'll finish it off with an easy touchdown. His 10th of the season on the ground. His 11th overall. Oh, now they're going to get us a flag for Milton <laughs> celebrating in the end zone. That'll be reinforced. I don't know. They might choose to take it on the extra point. 
But that drive goes right to the offensive line. They did a great job of opening holes. That opening run by Milton to set the tone for this opening series. That's a great job by our offensive line. Holmberry ready to kick this as they talk about the flag. Signal here. Yeah, I believe he's mic'd up today. Yeah, it's going to be unsportsmanlike conduct against us for uh, end zone celebration. If you're going to let the athletes make money out their likeness now, as everybody's doing, <laughs> you should let them celebrate in the end zone, right? Yeah, it's part of your I, brand, I, I'm right? Just, I'm yeah. just saying. You're absolutely right. If you're going to build a brand and try to make some money, you got to show a little personality. <laughs> It'll be assessed on the kickoff here. Is Holberry ready to kick it off? Are ready to put the extra point up? Pardon me. And that one is good into a pretty stiff win. Seven nothing, Saints. Six plays, 96 yards in two minutes and 20 seconds, featuring a 75-yard run on the first play of the game by Dwayne Milton. Not his longest run of the season. That was an 83-yarder early in the year, making another pitch for an offensive player of the week an award he's gar gainer garnered there we go that's the word I was looking for garnered twice this year see if the defense can stay up to task that's a probably the best start we've seen collectively from both yeah both defense and offensive units huh? both opening series from defense and the offense I would agree but you got to build on it We've seen fast starts before this year, though. They will mark it back here on the kickoff, so the dangerous special teams unit for Missouri Baptist will have a little room to work here. And they should be able to get this ball to midfield, you would think. And we mentioned Mike Malone. He's a cornerback by trade, kick returner, averaging a hair under 34 yards a kick return, which is number one in the country. I don't believe he's taken one to the house, though. Hasn't kicked one back for a touch or run one back for a touchdown. Low kick. Could have went out of bounds if they let that one go, but I think a return is a smart option here. As the MOBAP offense will start near the 49-yard line. The return made by Jordan Benavides, the running back. I apologize to the Benavides family if I'm butchering the last name. Expected uh, to see Isaiah King be targeted a bit more in that first drive. I know we're just three plays in, but the best player on the team, as far as uh, skill position players, I don't believe he got a look. They ran it, they tried to screen pass, and then they tried to run it again. See what they do here on the first play of their second possession. I formation offset left, another straight run. They go to Malone, and he sneaks through into the second level and picks up a first down. 12-yard play. I'm sorry, Kendall Davis, the running back, a senior out of Edwardsville. And I think Jonathan Pullen just clipped him on the ankle, or else that could have been taken to the house. Let's just see. He gets a little seam. I think it's 39 right there. Yep. Gets him with the left hand, knocks him down. John Pullen, the tackle, a true freshman out of Joliet West, the leading tackler on the team. That was number 59 on the season for young Mr. Pullen. They will run it again for Davis, and he's nice play. stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Chris Peters among the tacklers, along with Mike Grubin, the senior linebacker from Joliet Catholic. There he is. Chris Peters actually causes the pile there and gets an arm in on that tackle. He's been a monster here, especially the games at home. But watch 99 run it. They're looking at taking it in there and gets an arm in there from the backside. That's a nice play. To welcome all the folks listening and watching on our YouTube channel. Appreciate you guys tuning in here today. Whether you're Saints fans or Spartan fans, we appreciate having you. Second down and 10 for Missouri Baptist at the Saint 40. Quarterback keeper on the read play, and he's got a lot of room. There goes Lux. Oh, he spun down at the 15-yard line. It goes for 25 yards and a first down for Missouri Baptist. He can run it as well as throw it if yeah. the situation calls for it. But you don't really think of him as much of a runner, just a zone read, gets you outside. We came upfield too much from our defensive end spot, caused an actual seam, and that just gives him enough for a first down. Pulling again the tackle on the end of the play. First down and 10. Missouri Baptist at the St. 15 now. Snap back, looking to throw, firing end zone, looking for pulling. It is caught. Did he stay in bounds? He did, touchdown. 
What a throw. You see why he is among the nation's leaders in passing yardage. And they strike early here. Darian Pullian, the senior wide receiver with his fifth touchdown catch of the year. He puts it right in Pullian's hands, but watch this, you little Pop Warner football players at home. He catches this ball with his hands extended. High points that ball, exactly how you teach that. 8.38 to go in our first quarter. Missouri Baptist started with a three and out, and the second possession here with a touchdown. It's up and good. We could see uh, some points here today, Coach. 7-7. <laughs> seven, seven. We got we got to have a better option defensively on that edge because we have to set an edge. If we're going to invite them to run, we can't let them run outside of our edge to get down that sideline, especially with that 3-3 front that we play. We've got to set that edge as the wind starts to pick up yeah, here. Yeah, the wind stadium. is whipping. It knocked over the, uh, the kicking net on the sidelines. You see Coach Curry... Not too pleased with his defensive unit. Head coach also defensive coordinator, along with co-defensive coordinator Warner Emmerich, who came to St. Francis, well, came back to St. Francis, to be more exact, from St. Xavier. So you can call him Belichick Jr., right? <laughs> yes, yeah, that would be accurate you know, in terms I'm of personality, right? yeah. yeah. No, I'm saying because Belichick's the head coach, and he also is calling the defense. Sure, now. sure. Oh, I thought coach you were talking about Emmerich. <laughs> well, either one, you know what I'm saying? But they, they uh -huh. you know, both like that. They're very much so, yeah. I'm going to have to put a holder on the ball here, I believe. Nope. No, I don't want to do that. You do it. You do it. <laughs> the kicker called over a new holder. Austin Richards, the sophomore, will get the honors. That drive from Missouri Baptist, four plays, 52 yards, and one minute and 43 seconds. Thank you to the athletic director and st statistics runner, Dave Laquetta. Oh, onside? Go onside kick. It didn't, right go, it didn't go 10. It didn't nope. go 10. 12. Yes, no, it, it did. did. Yeah, 30, yeah needed it? to go past the 45, but I think it went out of bounds. That caught everyone by surprise. Especially when you have a guy hold it. Now, another thing that Missouri Baptist does, and we'll watch this later in the game, they run a lot of fake punts, and it mostly comes from their punter. Something that he sees on the defensive alignment from the punt return team. Wow, that, that caught I mean, that would have worked if it didn't go out of bounds. I think Missouri Baptist would have had that ball if it didn't trickle out of bounds. Take Let's a look at see. it. Especially when you got the guy on that side. Oh, there's offsides. They were offsides by about three yards. <laughs> I don't think the referees were expecting it. Ooh, that was close. But see, we don't have that replay here uh -huh. on this level. But if he would have kicked that, I would have thrown the flag because their kickoff coverage team was three yards offsides by the time he made contact. See the defensive unit there with Coach Curry. St. Francis with some great field position now. Starting at the Missouri Baptist 41-yard line. Cheers for the offensive line coming here from the Memorial Stadium stands. Rather sparse crowd on both sides of the field here. <laughs> Turn and give it. It's Dwayne Milton looking to race to the edge. He will be tracked down and forced out of bounds. A little shove there at the end, and one of the... Outside Student assistance goes down and gets help from Dwayne Milton. Watch the hands there, young man. You gotta be you gotta have your head on a swivel too if you're on the sideline. We saw a photographer oh, yeah. a couple weeks ago get lit up here at Memorial Stadium. No gain on the play. Tackle at the end of the play made by Jalen Cowley, the junior safety. Gain of two yards, second down and eight. Deadman, he's working with a, a bit of a tweaked ankle, so we'll keep an eye on that. With the way he runs. And how much torque he puts on that ankle, it's not a given. He's going to stay healthy here. He's going to throw here, though. Firing right, over through his man, and it is intercepted. Return is on up the sidelines before he tiptoed out of bounds around the 35-yard line. So the first pass attempt by St. Francis goes for a pick. It's the fifth interception thrown by Dwayne, or Major, uh, Major Dedman today. And I think there's something wrong with the rot tree because he's looking long. Yeah, I'm he not sure he was going it. for If he nope. was looking for Williams, the inside man, or the outside receiver. They ran the a combo route. The inside guy ran a, just a five-yard out, and the other guy went up the field. Looked like he, Deadman thought he was going to keep on extending and keep on uh, continuing his route. The ball goes back to Missouri Baptist. Again, the number 12 offense in the country in terms of yardage. They can put it on you in a hurry. Here's Lux. 
Downfield and has a man wide open again at the 45. Race up the sideline and out of bounds. Chased out in a shove at the end by Rio Strama. How great of a passer does John Lux look just on the eyeball test? He puts it right on the numbers, but if you're going to roll your coverage to King's side, you're going to double him. That's going to leave a lot of, what, opportunities for Pauline on the other side? And we've seen that with the touchdown and now this big long play. Whew. Look at this ball right on the money again. What do you call that formation there, Coach? Ooh, that's, that's more of a power eye from the pistol. Give goes to Davis, the running back. Stutter step up to the 16-yard line, a pickup of about five. And this is where you got to bow your neck. you got to bear down a little bit and also try to force a, a turnover. We have not had a lot of sudden change plays. You know what I'm saying, Nick? If they make a big play, we counter with a big play, either a turnover or a sack or a, a tackle for loss. Lux in the shotgun this time, has running backs on both hips. Three wide receivers out there, two right, one left ball, right hash. They will run it to Davis, chase down from behind, but they can't get him. He gets uh, about four yards. He'll be a yard shy, maybe two of the first down. So third down coming up for the Spartans. Chris Johnson comes to his linebacker spot, comes through to Muck, scrapes over the top of the offensive guard and makes that play. That'll bring up third and two. Make some noise, Saints fans. Everyone bundled up here at Memorial Stadium. And quite the Halloween on Thursday. A lot of snow, first time ever. Here's Mike Grubin staring down John Lux. How about that view here at Memorial Stadium? Lux takes a snap, it's a screen pass, lobs it up and incomplete. If he caught that ball, it's a touchdown, but the pressure just a bit much for Lux, and Lux is trying to go for it here on fourth down. He wants to go, he's jumping up and down, say, coach, come on. I don't think it's Mr. Lux's call, but watch, <laughs> we come an all-out blitz up the middle, and he just try dropping in a parachute. Ooh. If he catches that, yep. look, look at the pass he's gotten from him. Three <laughs> offensive linemen. <laughs> oh, he convinced his coach they will go for it on fourth. You should have seen while we were showing the replay, John Lux was on the sideline just jumping up and down. And he won the argument. Coach was like, all right, son, you want to go? Let's go. Fourth down and two. See what kind of play they like. Motion man to the right. Here's Lux to throw, looking for his man King. Into the end zone, up and knocked nice away! Play. At the last minute, the freshman cornerback, John Pullen, knocks it away, turnover on downs. Might have been his best play of the season. He gets his left hand in here, just on a streak route on the left sideline at the end. Watch this. He's in man-to-man, -to -man, doesn't even turn his head, puts his hand up right there, and knocks it out. It might have just been a drop. I'm not sure his hand actually got there, but either way, great defense by John Pullen. Freshman out of Joliet. He's a high school all-conference football player, fourth in the state in wrestling. Had a track and field time. He was a 200-meter sprinter and the seventh best time ever at Joliet West High School. The guy is an athlete. First and 10 here for the Saints. Major Dedman has Milton on his right hip. He will give to Dwayne. Safety's come up. Shoulder down, out of bounds at about the 13-yard line. And it goes for a loss of one on the play. Especially with the spot we're at in the field, I'd like to put the game back in the offensive lineman's hands and, and try to run that ball between the tackles like we did that opening series. Missouri's back to this defense. has got some speed, especially on the outside. Perry Barberin will come in for Dwayne Wilton at tailback. Three wide outs, right, one left. Hand off to Pere, tried to go inside. Nothing doing there. A very stout defense for Missouri Baptist. Mark Paddock, the nose tackle out of St. Charles, Missouri with the tackle. Now it's third and 11. You're playing behind the chains. Five and a half to go first quarter. Quickly to the line, go the Saints. As we finish up the replay of the tackle for a loss. Blitz shown by the linebackers. See if they bring some heat. Three down linemen. They do bring it, play action, Major firing down the middle of the field, has Ruffin! There goes Brandon Ruffin, he is a track star and he will race unabated to the end zone. Touchdown Saints! 
It goes 86 yards for Brandon Ruffin's first touchdown of the season, which is unbelievable to say, but he finally got free and onto the scoreboard. Hey, Major couldn't believe he was that wide open because he actually underthrew that ball, making sure he didn't overthrow Ruff. Ruff was five yards behind anybody in the secondary for Missouri Baptist. And watch this. Look how far, he's five yards behind the secondary. And once he gets it, he's gone. Holberry's extra point is good. 14-7 early on, 5.03 left to go first. That drive took a buck 21, three plays, 86 yards. So correct me if I'm wrong as we see Major Denman celebrating his uh, second passing touchdown of the season. We've had scoring drives of four plays, six plays, and three plays. <laughs> Where's the ball control We've had offense? some big Where, plays Where's here? the ball control <laughs> offense, especially in November? Well, they have some big plays, 75-yard run. That was a, what, what did we say, 83-yard pass? Look how happy that face is right now. He needed, look, look, oh, God. Look how happy that face is. I think there's just a huge sigh of relief in the Saints football program. He finally got a touchdown. If you don't know, if you're joining us for the first time. Was that Coach, who, who just did somersaults there? <laughs> Brandon Ruffin is a senior out of Peoria. He is the St. Francis career leader in receiving yards and touchdowns. And that was his first touchdown of the season. He now has 36 on, the, on his career. And he's now over 2,900 yards in his uh, four years here at St. Francis. He'll go down as one of the all-time greats. Polberry's kick into the win that actually was dying down here momentarily. Return here from Malone right up the middle. And he broke a few tackles. Wrapped out. And down he goes. Is Holberry on the bottom of that pile? Yes, he was. <laughs> Josh Holberry, the kicker, not afraid to mix it up. He'll take him down around midfield. A 40-yard kick return. That guy's kind of special himself. Averaging 34 a crack. Been a fun first couple of minutes here, huh? And, and look at this. Look at the, He still carries the ball a little bit too far away from his body, but once he gets there, I thought right now, if he would just kept it to the right side, he would have had a chance for a touchdown. First down is a run play. Pick about five yards off the left side. The outside handoff was number two, Kendall Davis. Pick up of about four. Yeah, did you see me? Yeah, did you see me? Yeah, I made that play. He's a kicker out of England, but also a rugby player, if that tells you what you need to know about him. 96 yards of... Rushing offense for St. Francis, 88 through the air. 184 total for St. Francis, 113 for Missouri Baptist here in the first quarter. <laughs> play action, Lux will be throwing. Plenty of time. Oh, got it! Picked up it. There's a flag on the play, but it is Chris Peters momentarily with his first interception of the season. Lux threw it right at him. The junior out of Lincoln Way North. Three and a half sacks, 11 tackles for a loss, two forced fumbles, a blocked kick, and maybe an interception here, depending on the flag. Well, where they threw that flag, that should be against Missouri Baptist. And it is. James Little, the referee, indicates holding on Missouri Baptist. And how about Chris Peters? I don't know if Peters read that screen or just a little check down, but he threw it right to him. That's a defensive lineman's dream. Watch 99. He's looking at him as a little check down. But look at that. Great he athleticism. Jumps up and makes it. He earned that pick. It wasn't thrown to him. He went up and got it. Now, see, that's a defensive lineman. Instead of taking him down the sideline, he just went right back into the guy and tried to run him over. About a 10-yard return for Chris Peters as well. We talked about him in the pregame, about how great his season has been. Started freshman, sophomore year, didn't play much his junior year, lit the fire underneath him, and he's playing very well this year. Major Denman with an 11-yard carry right up the middle for a first down for the Saints in the offense showing as much confidence as they have shown all year long right now. I go back to this, run the ball between the tackles. 3-3 three, three defense here for Missouri Baptist too. There's Chris Peters, junior out of Frankfurt. A ripped jersey to show for it too is the 
going to blow that dead, or was it just was he stood up there at the end? Stood up there in the end. Okay. Pretty quick whistle. Three thirty to play in the first quarter. Fourteen seven Saints with the lead and pretty good field position here. Second down and nine. Milton the tailback. Then we will look off to the side for the play. Second down for Dedman. He's going to send Milton off right side. Oh, right come the ground, on. Yeah. He never stepped into that throw. Major never stepped yeah, into that he throw. Always got, he tried to, tried to flick it with his wrist. He got to step towards your target and throw it right to him. He just dirted his ball. What? He's wide open, set up nicely. Yeah. And his one man to beat, which you trust Dwayne to do typically. Here, Coach Curry down there looking for R.J. Williams. And, and we'll tell you why here in a second. There's a snap to Major. Oh. They blitzed and they picked it up very well. And it will go for a loss of two. You heard him yelling at R.J. Williams there because he's one of the very few athletes to go both ways here. So he was hanging out with the offense when the defense was getting coached up by Curry. And you hear Coach Curry in, uh, you know, colorful language. When I call the defense over, get over here. You're part of the defense too. Fourth down for St. Francis, fourth and 11. I think Coach Curry just realized that, hey, wait. They call a timeout, see what they want to do here with 2.35 to go, 14 to 7. Make sure you stream all 2019 USF home football games live online through USF's YouTube channel. It's available through GoFightingSaints.com. Click on Upcoming Events. You'll see the video link right next to the game you want to watch. Of course, you can watch all the home volleyball games online this fall. The next home broadcast will be two Saturdays from today, November 16th. The season finale against St. Xavier again. That one will be a conference matchup. Played St. Xavier last week in a non-conference matchup just because of a scheduling quirk with uh, one of the uh, opponents folding up shop and uh, closing down the school, I believe. Not just the athletic program, right? Who was it? Why can't I think of the... Linwood. Ah, Lindenwood Belleville. Yep. There you go, yep. So they uh, put a hole in a lot of people's schedules by not playing this year, and St. Xavier and St. Francis able to fill that hole with a second game of the year. That replacement game was played last week, but the regularly scheduled conference game will be in a few weeks to finish up the year. Coincidentally, St. Xavier was the last opponent for both of these teams here today. If we throw the ball, we should throw the ball to who? Ruffin, there he is, fourth down, it's up high. Oh! Ruffin with a one-handed grab and his second touchdown. 19 yards. Oh, no, we can't, we can't do that, guys. Oh, my goodness. I Brandon. can't begin to tell you how good a catch that was. Brandon Ruffin's coming out party this year. Unbelievable. He had no business catching that football. None. You knew they were going to throw the ball to him because he was singled up. He's on the left side of the field. And I said, who are you going to throw the ball? You said, Ruffin, and look at that catch. <laughs> Holberry for the extra points. Snap a bit high. Hole got down. Plenty of leg. 21 to 7. Two touchdowns this quarter for St. Francis through the air. Just by the alignment, you know where Major was going to throw the ball to. Ruff had single coverage down in the bottom of the screen. That one-handed catch. Look at that big smile. That one-handed catch. Tip it right to himself. Get enough to down the left sideline to get inside the pylon and score that touchdown. He just out-athleted the corner on that play. Watch that. Tip it to yourself. Now let's see if he stays in bounds, stays in bounds, stays in bounds, and dive over the pylon. What Side judge was right there. What a play. Malone will step back to return the kick. 2.28 to go. 21-7. St. Francis pouring on the offense here today through the air. 107 yards through the air, 106 on the ground. That's balance. That's, that's balance. <laughs> Kick will be against the ground, pops up, and the return is on. <laughs> you know what cracks me up, being a whole special teams coach? 
You see guys who aren't supposed to return the kicks? And what do they always do? They cover that thing up with both hands, and <laughs> they don't want to fumble that ball. That was Bobby Nybert, the freshman. He's a running back out of Arnold, Missouri, with the return. You see Brandon Ruffin yanking it up with some offensive linemen after the touchdown. Now, I'm sure every wide receiver says this, but I know he's going to go back and huddle, and he's going to tell Major, hey, you know I'm open. You know I'm open. <laughs> I'm open every time. The sun peeks through the clouds that are building here in Joliet. John Lux will give. Tackle made inside for St. Francis by Mason DeLong. Ball carrier for the first time today, Chris Baldwin, the senior from Chicago Curry, a transfer from College of DuPage. Mason does a nice job coming from the linebacker spot and trying to actually rip that ball out at the end of that tackle. Really is mostly cloudy here, and you really can't tell just by looking at the field and how the sun is baking it. Beautiful day, though, for football, especially when you're up 14 points. Trips here to the right for Mobap. One to the left is King. Baldwin in the backfield with Lux. He'll zip it off right side. It's complete. Nice cutback to the 46, 47 yard line. That'll be enough for a first down for the Spartans. A reception made by Sergio Lopez, the senior from Oceanside, California. His 17th catch of the season. That was Michael Johnson coming from his D tackle spot, coming back, peeling back, getting in pursuit, and making that tackle. See the wind blowing an old glory here in Joliet. Above the Joliet Park District flag here at Memorial Stadium, owned by the Park Districts. Many, many teams play here. <laughs> Joliet Catholic, well, uh, several youth teams play here. Multi-use stadium, concerts, Taste of Joliet, everything here. Here's Lux to throw. Down the middle of the field has a man wide open, but he missed him just a bit. Diving attempt there over Blake Evans, who leapt to try to knock that one away. Tried to run a deep dig route. And he got over the linebackers in front of the secondary just a little bit too far in front of him. Anthony Taylor, the senior tight end, the target on the play. You know what phrase pops into my into my brain when I see John Lux throw? It's gunslinger. Oh, that's a good call. I'll give he you a just, point. I'll give you a point for that one. He just wants to fire it. I mean, he sidearms it if he needs to. He, he'll launch it downfield and he'll keep it and run like he will right now. Some nice blocking on the outside, and he, it's going to be close there for the first down. Looks like he'll be a yard shy on second, so bring up a third and one here for Mobat. I was not expecting him to run the ball as well as he has here in the first quarter. See all the passing yards he got, but he's a, definitely a two-way player. I think that's playing into how St. Francis wants to play, though, right? Oh, They're trying absolutely. To, yeah, trying to encourage the run. Well, John Lux has been encouraged, and he is more than willing to oblige so far as we wind down the first quarter. Isaiah King, the all-conference wide receiver out left. There's Lux in the shotgun, and they will give it to Baldwin. Inside run for a first down to the 41-yard line. A pickup of three. Clock will stop momentarily to move the chains. We'll see if they want to sneak in another play here. I think they'll be content to let this run down. Very entertaining first quarter here. Very entertaining. Lots of offense. 213 total yards of offense. 107 through the air, 106 on the ground for St. Francis, 138 total offensive yards for Mobap, 76 through the air, 62 on the ground, and three touchdowns. Brandon Ruffin with two touchdown grabs, his first two of the season. It's been a fun quarter. Let's see if we can get a, a second quarter to match it. 21-7 as we go into our first break of the game. St. Francis on top here watching St. Francis football on USF Sports TV Network. conference meet so it's kind of our biggest meet of the year. Sharon was a Lindsay Wilson runner. We'd known each other for a long time and she is a sweetheart. She's absolutely adorable. You would never want anything bad to happen to her in a race ever. And we were two and a half miles into it and Darcy and I were in second and third and Sharon was in first. We knew that she had gone the wrong way because we could barely still see her. She was still pretty far in front of us. She still came in third place at the finish, but I came in first and Danielle came in second. Immediately, we just go, no! <laughs> we just, like, both literally did this motion with our and arms. 
We didn't want the credit for first and second because we knew that's not what it really was. Welcome back, right out of the gate, right at the gate. Oh! Nearly intercepted by RJ Williams on the first down play from Lux looking for King in traffic. Look at his folding his arms right there. He knows he should have had it. Rajan Williams, 23 tackles, a forced fumble in one pass breakup after about the first couple of weeks of the season, moved over to play safety. Coach said they just needed a little help in the secondary and they put the, the player with the most athleticism and the brightest mind back there. That's number four, RJ Williams. <laughs> second down. Give to Baldwin. He sneaks through into the second level, backing his way to the 32, a yard shy of the first. That's a nine yard pickup. We probably shouldn't have had one or two. Give you some quick first quarter stats for, for St. Francis. St. Francis, 213 yards of total offense in the first quarter, 106 rushing, 107 passing. Brandon Ruffin, two catches, 107 yards, two touchdowns in the in the uh, first quarter. Major Dedman, two out of four. Both of his receptions were too rough. I'd pass it to him every time, too. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Eye formation under center is Lux. Turn and give to the fullback this time. He sneaks through. R.J. Williams can't bring him down. It's DeLong who has to come from behind and take him down at the 16-yard line. It was the fullback, Andrew Kraus, 5'9", 225, senior from Barnhart, Missouri. Reverse pivot, fullback trap right here. Up the middle, you get through before the linebacker recognizes the play. Get the seam. Quick hitting play, always a good play. DeLong with his 41st tackle, a second team all-conference player last year at linebacker for the Saints. Just underway in our second quarter, first and 10. Looking, checks it down, middle of the field, but up to the 15-yard line for the completion. That's enough for a first down to his tight end, 89 Anthony Taylor. First and goal for Missouri Baptist as they trail by 14 here, 21-7. You know, Everyone's welcome here at Memorial Stadium, Coach. Two legs or four? You're looking for some Halloween tweets. Look at him. He's <laughs> looking at, I didn't get this. I didn't get this. Bernie's long-lost cousin, I believe. First and goal for Mobap. Baldwin, nope, it's going to be Lux on the keeper. And he gets lifted up and put down by Mason DeLong, the linebacker. Mason DeLong has had a really nice first quarter here for the Saints. He comes in from his linebacker spot, tackles him by the legs to make sure he doesn't get any forward progress. Now it's going to be second and goal from about the five. And now you got to get this element of your defense. Hey, Lux has shown what? He can run the ball a little bit. So now if you get him on the edge, he's got the option if you run some RPO with him, get to the edge. Out of 38 red zone appearances coming into today, Mobap has scored touchdowns on just 17. High formation again. Baldwin the tailback. Play action. Into the end zone. That is caught and touchdown. So make that 18 for 39 now on touchdowns in the red zone. This to their tight end again. Taylor, his second touchdown catch of the season. Taylor is a big for a tight end, yeah. especially at this level. 6'2", 257. Just slow blocks a little bit. Releases out to the left flat. Little sprint action to the right and throw back to the left. Puts the ball way up there. Nice job. Nice execution. Very similar in, in body size to St. Francis tight end Malik Roberts. He's 6'4", 255 out of Naperville Central. He hasn't been targeted yet, but I assume he will be at some point as the extra point try is no good. The lead is eight for St. Francis. 12.25 to go in the first half. You know, talking to some of the players down on the field before the game, and they're all talking about, you know, November, it gets a little colder, it's about 35, and it was Wednesday and Thursday, and they knew the snow was coming, the snow's on the field, and they're kind of talking about themselves, hey, you know, I don't know if uh, Coach Curry is going to want to practice out there, you know, with all the snow out there. And <laughs> oh, so, yeah? So I'm just like, okay, did you guys practice? Yeah, we practiced out in the snow, <laughs> two, three inches of snow, and the guys were showing me pictures of practice, and I'm like, now, how long did you stay out here? Oh, two and a half hours, regular practice. I'm just like, well, you might play in it on Saturday, so you got to practice in it. 
don't think anyone's earned the right to take a practice off. Coach Curry's got to do a better job of, of matching his his granimals. You know, he had a his what now? His granimals. You know, when you, this is before your time, but yep. you know, you, you'd match like zebras with zebras and giraffes with giraffes. <laughs> and we'll, we'll show Coach Curry again. I'll, I'll tell you what I'm <laughs> I'm talking about here. <laughs> I'm going to be his fashion police. Wait right till here. after this. Uh, Return here. Kick is up, and the return will be Ruffin from the 20. He's dangerous with the ball in his hands. Oh, he's got a seam. A little bit on the outside. Can he get another block? There he goes. One man to beat the kicker. Gets him out of bounds at the 45. And one of the officials took a nasty smack there at the point of attack on the sideline. You can tell Ruffin from, a big return. You can tell from up here that he had a seam. If he just got to that right side, and you know he's feeling it because he has two touchdowns in the first quarter. As soon as he got that, with that speed, that track speed that he has, as soon as he turns it out, watch, he's got to see, he knows where he's going. Right now, he knows exactly where he's going. And watch, he turns it up, and if he had another, probably a yard, Nick, he might have took this all the way to the house. Uh, 61, Clayton Yeedy, the freshman with the big block there to spring him. So it was a 35-yard return for Brandon Ruffin. As the clouds take a little bit more of an effect here on the field. First down, two running backs. It's Milton left, Barber in right. See Brandon Ruffin, number 80. There he is in the slot left. Let's give that man a bit of a breather. Parade Barber in will go in motion. And a whistle will blow it dead before the snap. I can't remember us. Having Pierre and, and Milton in the same backfield at the same I, time. I can't think of another instance. Yeah. That's a little bit different wrinkle. I don't think St. Francis was ready for a delay game. Push the ball back to midfield. Try again here on first down. See if he goes in motion again. See if they're going to run the same play. Blitz shown. They do put him in motion again. They will rush four. It's a run, though. Only a yard that time for Dwayne Milton. Dwayne Milton, the ball carrier. The wind hasn't really changed here in the second quarter. It's still blowing across as you watch this game from your TV screen across the Missouri Baptist sideline. Milton, seven carries, 76 yards, and a touchdown so far today. One of them a 75-yarder, so... Not too many opportunities after that. Off balls on the ground. Milton didn't oh, pick it up. on it. Luckily for the Saints. Heads up play by Zach Bikema. The all-conference right tackle for St. Francis. And that's Major's fault because he didn't put it into the mesh zone yep. of Milton. Let that ball a little bit too low. And watch this handoff. A little bit too low. See, it's got to be up higher so he can secure that. And Millen's got to fall on that ball. Bikeman knows what to do because he's off his alignment. <laughs> Third down in a mile here for St. Francis. Here's Dedman to throw. And he'll be sacked. They got to him pretty quick on that play, trying to get a number on the defensive player. There we go. Sack made by Kenyon Perkins, his first sack of the season. Junior out of St. Louis, the wheel linebacker. And they're going to have to kick it off here. Punt returner, TJ Rogers, freshman out of Cabot, Arkansas. I think he's a little too far back. He's yeah. at least 50 yeah, yards so. back <laughs> from the, the line of scrimmage. The wind in the face of Tyler Keene here. He's an angle punter. He'll angle it left. I think he Bounce. missed it. Yep. Yeah, you saw it. So three bounces. He didn't even he didn't even give himself a chance to return that ball as it rolls inside the 15-yard line. That'll do. That's kicked by Tyler. You were talking to him before the game. <laughs> he's a he's a character, man. I, I talked to him before every yeah. game, and he, he and what do you think the win? What do you think of this hash and the, this hash stinks? Kicking it this way. This is like, would you just kick the ball, son? You're a punter. You got one job to do. Punt the ball. They, they, they overthink. They're like guys with the three-foot putt. Yeah, you know, they just, you know they're, they're out there to look good. They're, they're out there to, to you know, hit, hit one between or inside the 20 every once in a while. Oh, my God. They worry about <laughs> that's just not me mocking them. That is literally what he told us. <laughs> I know, of course, tongue-in-cheek. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get an email. St. Francis up eight here, 10-24 to go in the first half. High snap and handled. Hand off to Baldwin. He's hitting the backfield. 
And they go backward. R.J. Williams is there along with 91. Jake Pott, the defensive end from Lincoln Way Central. Jake Pott ran him down from his defensive. Actually take him with one arm. Watch this pursuit from 91. Comes down the line. Look at this. Pass through oh. right there and gets him. Give him that tackle. Had a season best five tackles last week against St. Xavier. Stepping up in his redshirt freshman year. That is two and a half, or make that four tackles behind the line. He's got two and a half sacks to go on the year. Lux to throw. Middle of the field. Nice That's throw. A... Nice catch. It's his tight end. About 20 yards to the 30. Still fighting for more. He'll pick up four at the end of that play. They're seeing Anthony Taylor, the tight end, make a name for himself today. And you got to give Missouri Baptist a ton of credit because they realize that we're Dublin King. Watch this big tight end catch it. And look at what? Okay, there's five after the catch. <laughs> And he's still fighting, he's still fighting. But they've done an excellent job, Missouri Baptists, of going to other people. Polian, they targeted him. The big tight end, they targeted him because St. Francis is taking King away. You talk about that throw for a second. That was picture perfect. That could not have been placed anywhere else except where he put it. It's going to be a run. Nice play. Yep, picked him up. Baldwin on the carry. Stop made, uh, Grubin was there to make the stop for St. Francis, among some others. Looks like Chris Johnson as well, the linebacker. There's Grubin. Mike Grubin, a senior out of Joliet Catholic. Rio Strama, a junior out of Joliet Catholic, both starters on this defense. Also a starter, Michael Johnson, the running back, but he went out a few weeks ago, out for the season with a leg injury, and that's heartbreaking as he was in his senior year. Second down and nine. Screen it to King, and he's got some blockers, but a nice tackle made by Johnson. That saved at least a first down. And we were about a half a step from pick six on that. Yep. Watch this. Little swing pass. Watch. We just right. Instead of inside relationship, he took outside. Hathon Hurdle zipping past. That'll bring up third. 51, four. Chris Johnson. Uh, sophomore out of a small school football power, Immaculate Conception Catholic. He's from Hillside. I'd like to see him, uh, us bring some pressure on this play and make Mr. Lux make a decision quicker than he wants to. Two deep safeties, corners off the receivers. Here's Lux rolling right on the move. Fires Wobbler. Incomplete. Intended receiver was Darian Polian. Now heads up here from Missouri Baptist. If they get a look, the punter's got an automatic fake punt read. It's not usually called from what you see on film. So he'll he just looked at the sideline of the bench. This might be a position where you would run a fake punt. Let's see how we line up here. Punter is Josh Munn. He is a freshman. He's carried it four times. Averaging 20 yards a carry. Those are your fake punts. There's the snap, and he will let it fly. He looked for it. High kick, shorter than I would expect. Oh, oh St. no, Francis what are we it. doing? And the return is on. It's Jordan Benavides, but I don't believe you can return that. You, you can't, can't advance, advance him off. Yep. You can't advance him off. That's a good call by the officials. Uh, that wind is playing havoc at knuckleball. The wind is blowing cross. From when you're watching across the Missouri Baptist field. So the question is, did the Missouri Baptist player impede the catch of the ball? No, no touch. Yep. They just they essentially can't return. It was the call by the official. You can't advance a muff. That is correct. But St. Francis is looking to see if there was contact made before nope. uh, he touched the ball, and there definitely was not. I'll say you were watching the replay. I was watching the uh, official here make the, make the call. So I think that's what Coach Curry is arguing with the uh, referee, James Little, right now. He's like, hey, they didn't let my, re my return man get a chance to catch the kick. But replay showed pretty clearly that he did. He just got caught up with the win there. So Missouri Baptist a chance to tie it with a touchdown and a two-point conversion here. And they're going to start from the St. Francis 30. Lux downfield, left side. It's King up high. Made the grab. I believe he got his feet in bounds. 
That's a heck of a grab by Isaiah King inside the 10 yard line. Sets up Mo back with a first and goal here. It wasn't really technically a back shoulder throw, but he threw it right in the sideline where only his guy could catch it. Watch King catch, and yep, got it in. He does a nice job of catching the ball with his hands. I know you're supposed to do that wide receiver, but he does a nice job of securing the catch with both hands. I formation again. Run it to Davis to the five. Pick up of a few. Michael Johnson is having himself a first half here from St. Francis from his nose tackle position. He made that tackle again, peeling off his block. Second and goal. Davis on the right hip of Lux in the shotgun. There's the snap. They're going to try to throw. The tight end is open right, but they're going to go back in the end zone. Incomplete looking for the back pylon for Darian Pulliam, but missed him a bit long. John Pullen in coverage on Pullian. He had his tight end open right yep. now, right off the bat, <laughs> if he wanted to hit him. That's what I was looking at. Set up now for third down and goal from the five-yard line. Third and five. Six fans. See, 89, all he's got to do is hit him right there in the flat. Great camera work, Brandon and Jessica and their crew. Six and a half to go here in the first half. Very entertaining game so far. Full bag motions left. They're going to run that way, and he is at the goal line. Touchdown. Missouri Baptist, a two-point conversion away from tying it. Chris Baldwin, his eighth touchdown of the season. You take a look at any football game and the eventual outcome, whatever the final score is, and usually, and watch this, this right up the middle, pull it from around by the right tackle. Nice job of sealing that play and, and getting him a lane. But what, what caused this touchdown? A, a muff, a turnover. Yep. All right. What happened last time Missouri Baptist scored? A missed extra point. Now they're going to have to go for the regular extra point. But those special teams play always factors into the final score. Colin Black to kick it. That one's good. One point lead is uh, where it stands for St. Francis. 622 to go in the half. So was your trick or treat experience good? Uh, Define good. I mean, it happened. It, it, was, it was a thing, but it was freezing cold. It was cold. It was snowy. snowy. It was, <laughs> it was oh brutal. my God. Do you think, do you, think in, in, you know, every time I come out here, when I get here about two, two and a half hours before the game, and I see our camera guys setting up, and I'm just like, you guys just do yeoman work and are oh, yeah. just great people and do a great job. But do you think on Thursday those guys go out dress up like cameramen? <laughs> or they have their kids go out and just and look at the there, – there's, there's my dog. Looks like my dog. But you think the camera guys go out there and, hey, we can be friendly. I'm going to be a cameraman. What is a camera? What does that costume consist of? Well, you got to carry the camera around the block on your shoulder the whole time. Probably right? like three layers of parka, a hood, and a hat. Yeah, and a little headset. <laughs> <laughs> you got to have the headset. Get a course. white shot. Get a white shot. Get a white shot of the neighborhood. You know? You carry maybe a little tripod in your wagon, something like that. <laughs> Here's the kick. It'll be roughing. I don't know why they keep kicking to him. This time from the 15 yard line. Decent return to about the 40. 35 yard return. You see, look at this. They're, they're outside in the elevator. There they are. Look, I mean. I will, he's he's got to take that whole thing around the block for Halloween. You know, I'm, I'm you going know to how see. heavy that is? I'm you know how heavy that is? How heavy is it? it it's heavy. <laughs> All right. It's heavy. So you got to take the wagon, the tripod, the camera. Do I need the, the grimace as well? And you got to take the, the white sheet so you can white balance. You got to have that too. <laughs> that, that's part of the ensemble. You can buy that for nineteen ninety five. That would be your Halloween costume. We are... Extremely lucky to work with who we do. These guys are awesome. Here's Dwayne Milton on first down. Trying to find a little bit of a crease. Right? Made something out, of, or something out of nothing there up to about the 45, five-yard pickup. There's the job you never want. You know it's the sideline camera. Is, Wait, where, that, that's the coolest job. Where, where does the sideline camera rank as far as hierarchy in cameramen? Brandon, you, is that top, middle, bottom? Do you want to be roaming the sidelines? The I very want, bottom. <laughs> I want to be in the press box. 
<laughs> you want to be the replay guy. You're warm in the press box. Yeah. Here's Denman throwing. Nice and catch. And caught right at the 50-yard stripe, and the officials give him a nice spot and a first down. He yep. was standing right on the 50, made the catch. First down. We're going to wind the clock. There's, oh, hi. Yeah, we're, we, we yeah, got, yeah, we got the nice great job, right? The, I got the warm hand. <laughs> like, I, I'm all good. I'm all bundled up like a bug in a rug. I'm good. You want to talk about soft, these guys up here. <laughs> got my little portable yeah. heater in case I need it. I'm all good. That's awesome. Here's Deadman again. Pressure, and down he goes. Blitz was on, and three Spartans right in Major Deadman's face. Back to the 40-yard line. Ten-yard loss on first down. Nice play. DeCorey McGee. Look, they just come from the top side and the bomb side. Look, he's got nowhere to go. He stays in the pocket. If you get him on the edge, you can take advantage of his legs, but he had nowhere to go on that time. Nice job by Mo Bapp. McGee and Donovan Baldwin, the Buck and Mike linebackers. Second down and 20, and oh, ball on the ground. Who's going to get it first? Still loose, and there is a pile. Seth Williams thinks St. Francis has it. They just knocked that out of Milton's hands, I believe, but Derek Wentworth will See, that's walk the away second with it. time he's recovered a fumble by us because he's offensive lineman. But <laughs> the only guys who get a chance to scoop and score are who? Defensive players. So I preach to my guys. Look, the ball's on the ground for like 10, 12 minutes, it seems like. And look at <laughs> Everybody tries to pick it up. Look at Wentworth. No, oh, that's mine. Yep. Offensive fumble. Fall on the ball. Defense, scoop it up. Well, now it's a third, third down and 40. <laughs> Nothing you can do. The blitz was on. Deadman trying to just make something happen, but he goes backward again. Now it's a true fourth down and 40. This is a very important last four minutes of this first half because 30, we had, I should say, fourth and 30. Pardon we, me. We, we had the advantage here. Now four minutes, the, the game's kind of tilted toward Missouri Baptist a little bit, and we haven't really done anything offensively here in the last two series. So we've got to get a good punt. We've got to cover it and watch it. He's got nowhere to go. He tried his quarterback draw. I understand what he's trying to do, but the momentum is definitely on Missouri Baptist side right now. Tyler Keene. Hoping to flip the field. He's got a tough task here, though, as he punts into a tough wind. And judging by our alignment, he should kick the ball to his left. He does so. High spiral. Nice kick. That's a very good kick in these conditions. And it just sticks on a dime there at the 43-yard line. No bounce in either direction whatsoever. I wish my golf shot would do that. First down, Mobat. 3-10 to go in the half. Tyler Keene has been excellent this year, punting the football. Really his only responsibility, it's Josh Holberry doing the place kicking. Tyler Keene handles the punting duties. If I were to play football, kicker. I could see that. <laughs> I could definitely see that. Play action, throwing, quick throw to the tight end. Taley again. He'll pick up 15 and more. He cannot be taken down. There's like seven Saints before he's finally drawn down at the 34 yard line. 24, 25 yards on the reception. He's been their best player so far. Isaiah King has been covered up most of the game, but the tight end, Anthony Taley, has picked up the slack. Just a little option banana route for him. He goes in, he goes out, cuts it, and look at it. One, two, three, four. Four St. Francis guys trying to take him down. And look at the offensive lineman just pushing the pile, which is legal to do now. First down at the 34-yard line. Missouri Baptist trailing by one, looking to take the lead before halftime here. Quick, quick uh, slant route for Isaiah King. He'll pick up a catch there in about eight yards. Made by number Definitely you got to give credit to Missouri Baptist because they've done a great job of in-game adjustments. Everybody talks about halftime adjustments. They understood and they realized it, that St. Francis is taking King away. So what do they do? Hey, tight end game now. He's open, hit the tight end. He's done a great job so far today. Just three catches today so far for Isaiah King, but I suspect that is not the last we've heard from number 12. Trips tight right. Lux throwing. 
middle of the field. Pick it off! R.J. Williams! R.J. Williams has it at the one. He'll return it up to the eight. First interception for the safety. R.J. Williams in his defensive career. Coming up a bit limp, though. Hopefully it doesn't cost him some playing time, but a big turnover forced by St. Francis. He came over from his secondary spot on the left hash, came across and saw that and, came, and undercut this. Watch, he comes from the left side, across. He wasn't even the guy covering that. Just the second interception for the Saints defense this season. That is Luck's 13th pick of the year. I don't think Lux ever saw him. Just like they see Coach Curry say, hey, good play. You say, you know, a gunslinger, you think of Brett Favre. Brett Favre also leads the uh, NFL in career interceptions. As the run on first down takes us under two minutes. Now you would think Missouri Baptist would start taking timeouts here, and they do. We've got some big time playmakers for us making big time plays here in this first half. So. Talking about Ruff, Milton. talking about Milton, talking about him. RJ, you bet. Hopefully he's okay after that one. Let's see if we get a little recognition there. Great play there, RJ. Face mask on with the goal. <laughs> there he is, holding up number four. What'd you play back in the day, coach? I was an outside linebacker and I was a center. Well, that's interesting you say that. Center's been a bit of a question mark here. I know they don't really have a true center on the team. Malcolm Britton, uh, uh, a guard, I think, who had to move over to center because of necessity this year, and it's been of a bit of a struggle for that. Center's supposed to be your smartest guy because you've got to make all your line calls, your checks, what kind of, which way you're going to tilt your uh, offensive blocking scheme to. Did you just humble brag a bit there? Yeah, I did, but I'm <laughs> glad you caught that. I, was, <laughs> I, mean, I, I caught it. All right. It'll be second down here for St. Francis. We got a referee trying to make a call here. Again, James Light Little. Each team with two timeouts left in the first half. Are we having some technology issues here? Probably not that important. Yeah, there you go. All right, well, I just forget. <laughs> I, don't, did you, I didn't even see a flag. Did you see a flag? No. He, he, there to... Oh, they're, oh, they're going to put a couple more seconds on the clock. 145 on the clock is what they're saying. Well, it, and just like the center is the smartest guy on the offensive line, the clock operator has to be the smartest guy in the press box. Yes, he do. He, well, he actually, he's got to be the guy who pays the most attention. <laughs> Second down for St. Francis. Corners move off the wide receivers. Dedman trying to run it himself. Sneaks his way to the 16-yard line. Another timeout called here. Brings up third down and three. Major Dedman working on three games in a row before the St. Xavier game. Three, year, three games in a row over 100 yards. Had his best game, 143 yards a few weeks ago. This is very manageable for us. Third and three, 48 seconds left to go, or under a minute left to go, I think, in the uh, first half here. Got a trivia question we can get to here. Maybe if we uh, sneak it into this timeout. Here's your trivia question, Coach. Comparing this season to last season, USF trails in all but one statistical category listed here. Can you name which one? So in other words, what does this team do better than last year's team? Rushing yards, passing yards, first downs, kickoff returns, rushing touchdowns. No, I would have I guessed off the top of my head rushing yards because I, I, I definitely would not have guessed the passing yards. No, or first downs no, or kick or, returns. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I would guess I would vote for A. The rushing yards. Yep. Saints have scored 20 rushing touchdowns this season. 21, oh, actually. 21, if you include Dwayne Milton's touchdown today. In eight games compared to just 14 total rushing touchdowns in 11 games last year. It's all about the run this year for St. Francis. Third down and three with a buck 36 to go. They hand it off to Milton. He finds get it, get it, get it, get that it. That is fantastic offensive get boy. line work, and he squirts out up to the 40. That's a, oh. Tripped up near the 45-yard line, 26 yards. And there's a flag on the field on the far sideline, about the 31-yard line.
as it sits a 26-yard first down run. Uh, but this they're is walking this backwards. Is, this is going to come back. Could be a hold. Big boys made some people move on that play. That was a horse collar tackle. Iffy, maybe. You now they're looking at Missouri back to sideline, so this looks like this call might go against St. Francis. Taking a look at the schedule for St. Francis. Final road trip is next week out to Davenport. Take on St. Ambrose. Currently sits at number two in the conference. 3-0 and in the MSFA, 3-3 three and three overall. And then back at home against St. Xavier, who's number one in the conference, number 11 in the country. They're 5-2 and two with a 3-0 and oh record in the conference. A lot to talk about there with head coach Jason Barinak. Now they're going to discuss it with Coach Curry. Holding offense, number 89. The tip for Tilly from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down. First down after the home by Malik Roberts on the outside. It's final two minutes, taking quite a while here. I don't get why coming from the spot of the foul. It's a holding penalty. It should be marked off as a holding penalty. Here we go. Clock will wind here. First down for St. Francis. Huh. It's Dwayne Milton. So the... Pretty much redoing it there. Second, now second down. Gain of about two yards. The Missouri Baptist did, did not take a timeout. A minute 10 left to go in the first half. If you got rough and singled up, I'd yeah. almost take a shot to him. Being a, as hot as he has been here in the first half. There's Dwayne Milton. Ruffin is in the slot right. Nice read that time by Dedman. Looking outside, but a nice tackle to keep him in. Keep him from picking up the first down. Looked like that was to Corey McGee. Could have been Mike Malone as well on the tackle. Third down, though. Nice pick up above four or five yards. Third down and three again. And St. Francis is going to have to snap it one more time before the half ends here. And just take a knee. Yeah, and that's what they're doing. St. Francis is content with the one-point lead. <laughs> Not sure how many people are on the field, I think. There you go. Timeout called by St. Francis. They don't know who the personnel they want on the field here for this play. Timeout. With 11 okay. seconds to go, just delaying the ha inevitable halftime here. Should uh, disregard the time there at the bottom of the screen. So overall, though, right. St. Francis was a nice hot start, especially defensively. Defensive great series, we score there. Took control of the game in the first quarter. Kind of let Missouri Baptist back in it here at the end of the, the uh, first half here, 21-20. But some nice things by St. Francis, reestablishing Ruffin. Defensively, Michael Johnson was a monster here in this first half for St. Francis. Nice job by Missouri Baptist. Hitting what? The tight end, knowing that King's being taken away a little bit. So it's going to be very interesting here in the second half which team comes out and reestablishes what they're doing. I think we're just waiting for a kneel down here. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> and, and my thoughts exactly, sir, or ma'am, I'm not sure. But but you know what? If you take a kneel down, here's a, if I'm a Missouri Baptist, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, if they take a kneel down, I'm calling timeout. Because then it'll be fourth down. I'm putting the pump block on. I'm putting the pump block on. Uh-huh. All right. They're going to set up in a, a formation here. Assuming that they're just going to run it to Dwayne and call it a half. But we'll see. Third down. Yep. Here's Dwayne. Cuts it up. 35-yard line to the 40, and out of bounds he goes, and that will well, to a. bring up a first down with four seconds left. We'll move the change. We'll start the clock. We'll go to halftime here. Take a shot at to Ruff. Take a shot to Ruff. Think so? I would. Four seconds left. Why not, right? I would. Put trips up? on one side, oh. Ruff on the other side. They're going to go kneel it. I think that's what Brandon Ruffin's and thinking, he's like, too. oh, man. 
<laughs> there's Brand, just throw me the ball, coach. There's the snap, there's the knee, and we take it down to halftime. But it's been an entertaining first half of football here. Major Deadman, three for five, two touchdowns. Dwayne Milton, 14 carries, 106 in a score. Brandon Ruffin scores his first two touchdowns of the season, 107 yards of receiving. The offensive output has been the best so far this year for St. Francis, but they only tra or only lead it rather by one. We'll take a breather here on the radio side. Andre's got a halftime report. We'll take a little bit of a break here on the uh, video TV side. We'll come back with some halftime stats in just a few minutes. The wind whipping here in Joliet, but the Saints lead it by one, 21 to 20.
Big show today. Big show. Uh, Jason, let's, let's give it 110 percent, Jason. If not 100, at least like 70, man. <laughs> Going on five, Jessica. Welcome back to Joliet. Nick and Lee with you. 21-20. Saints lead it. Missed extra point by Missouri Baptist. The difference in this one so far. But before we dig too deep into the numbers, uh, we get to visit an old friend of ours, Aaron Ellis, the starting quarterback, uh, one of the two starting quarterbacks uh, last year here for the Saints, playing over in uh, Denmark right now professionally, getting a paycheck to play football. That's yes, pretty sir. nice, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah. So how's Very it going out there? Tell, sure. us, tell us what it's like out there. Uh, beautiful country, you know. Um, I really enjoy the atmosphere of it being more of a professional atmosphere. Uh, the football's pretty good. Um, it's it's about equivalent to college and a little higher than that. Okay. You know, it's not no NFL yet. Sure. But, uh, you know, taking baby steps to keep climbing. How uh, how are the fans? Like, is is American football taken to it's, rather nicely? It's out slowly there? slowly yeah. growing for really? sure. Um, the team I played for had the best uh, fans out of all the teams in the league what, what is the the nickname of, of your team the oaks the oaks, the oaks. so what, what town do you play for is it, is uh, it by Frederickson. town i don't know I mean, yeah it's by town frederickson oaks yeah oaks. and then uh How'd this next do? year i'll be playing somewhere else but uh okay we, we we were doing okay but we had a lot of injuries um it, it caused us to have to forfeit the last few games because we just really? we lost we lost seven guys to injury and then four guys to retirement who were key players uh -huh. and we just didn't have um the best numbers it was so, a newer team, so we didn't have a, a full 53-man roster. We, you know, okay. we were we were pushing 30 at the most. So uh, after you're finished in Denmark, uh, what what does the future look like for one Aaron Ellis? Hopefully, the Canadian League soon here. Um, oh, hey, there you go. Pr probably uh, going to be in Germany this next year, and then uh, after that, going to go all in on the Canadian. Then you know, the dreams one day to reach the NFL. But uh, if not, I'm very thankful for my opportunities here at St. Francis, and that's gotten me to the point where I am today. Tell you what, uh, for any football player to, number one, earn a paycheck, and for football to get you to see some places not many people get to see and do some things that people don't always get to do. So whether you, you make it to Canada or the NFL or not, I'd, I'd say that's quite a success, man. Yes, thank you so much. Congratulations. That. I appreciate you visiting yeah, with thank us. Thank you. Have a good one. Take care. If, uh, if somebody wants to follow your progress, what's the best way to do that? Uh, Instagram. There you go. A. <laughs> a Ellis underscore 15 okay um we'll be uh, announcing what team i'm going to be playing for within the next week all right do you already know is this like a big special uh, yeah. deciding between two and okay. then uh making that final decision on wednesday what, what are their colors i'll tell you which one you should play for uh right black and white for the first one and then blue and white for the second no you got to go blue and white on that yeah, yeah blue black and white. And white's, you, know, you can't do much with black and white all yeah, right you got to go with the blue and white all right all right good luck to you Thanks. man congratulations aaron ellis former saint quarterback now playing professionally uh overseas uh, all the best to him so let's go back to coach lee and i know you were perusing the stat sheet here while we were talking with Aaron. Anything you noticed right off the bat? I should probably wait for you to put your headset back on. I apologize. We got, we got the quarterback <laughs> in here, you know, taking control here. But no, I, I was I was very uh, happy with the balance of St. Francis offense. They uh, ran the ball. We ran the ball for 120 yards, and we passed the ball for 112 yards. Uh, Major Deadman was three out of five, 112 yards, rough. Two catches for 107 yards and two touchdowns. But the rushing game, Dwayne Milton, 14 carries for 116 yards. Major Deadman, nine carries for 41 yards. On the other side, Missouri Baptist, John Lux, 11 out of 19, 172 yards and two touchdowns. Receiving the tight end, four catches, 62 yards. Isaiah King been held in check, three for 34. But you take a look at it. Missouri Baptist put up 267 yards of total offense in the first half. That's just outstanding. And they held the ball, Missouri Baptist, for over 17 minutes in the first half. Didn't seem like that was the case. We started off good in the first half, but we did not score in the second. Or second quarter, excuse me. Both teams kind of huddled up on their individual sidelines. I've never seen two teams get quite as hyped up at halftime than we're seeing right now. This is kind of incredible. I, we're going to have a heck of a second half, and I was uh, 
talking with some fans on the on the YouTube chat right now. We have a lot of uh, Missouri Baptist and St. Francis fans talking about the game, and one of them, Colin, made a great point. Spartans held St. Francis scoreless there in the uh, in the second quarter, so the defense has stepped up for Missouri Baptist trying to stop that big run. So we get the ball here to start the second half, and I'm interested to see what our game plan adjustment would be. I like us running the ball between the tackles. Every time we try to get outside, we're bigger physically than Missouri Baptist is on the defensive line. 15 on the clock. Pretty even game throughout this one, like we mentioned before. The only difference, a mixed, missed extra point. Linebackers ready to roll here for St. Francis. And as we start the second half, the wind has died down just a little bit. Did you enjoy your uh, halftime snack? You know, I love Mrs. Laquetta, and I've known Mrs. Laquetta probably longer. No, actually, I've known Mrs. Laquetta longer than I've known my wife. And today, she <laughs> made one of my favorite desserts for the uh, press the box lunch. The apple squares. The apple yes, squares. Oh, my goodness. That woman can cook. She's oh. just a saint. Delicious. <laughs> Of course, the mother of Dave Laquetta, our athletic director here. We appreciate all they do for us during the games. Coach Curry's ready to go. The energy right now is pretty incredible here for halftime. St. Francis gets the ball roughing back there to return. Let's see if they kick it to him again. He's been close to breaking him a few times here. They do. Right at him. Ruffin will run up to the 20, and here's the return. He's got a seam. Oh, bounce it outside. Down he goes. Nice play made by Austin Richards for Missouri Baptist. They came up with the ball, but he was down. Let's see what Major Deadman and company has in store for us. But you know what? This, you know what that that charge fire up after halftime. This is the first time here at home that both teams are kind of next to each other in the locker room, aren't they? That, that is strange, yeah. You know, usually they go across to the armory, one, the visiting team, and we stay here on, on the home side. But they're kind of next to each other, so I don't know if there's something that was said at halftime. Snap back to Major. Turn goes, and a give goes to Milton. Hard fought few yards, about three and a half or four. St. Francis coming out with the no huddle again. Noah Fritz going to go split off wide left for St. Francis, the diminutive 5'7", 175 pound sophomore. He'll be next to Jamil Salam on the inside left. Brendan Ruffin's wide. Oh, no, not, that's Williams. Here's a run inside. There goes Willi or Milton again up to the 50, but the ball uh, caused that fumble very clearly. It is a 13 yard first down run for Dwayne Milton. Get him running north and south. Let him take a use of his speed. Once he gets past the first level and the second level, he can make some moves. Watch how hard he hits the hole right there. He's on the second level. Now he's in the secondary level. Big game. First down for the Saints at midfield. Deadman takes the snap. Shoulder high. Keeps it. Linebackers come up and make a nice tackle. Gain of one. Jalen Cowley, the safety, came up to make the stick. This all of a sudden has got a little bit more intensity, doesn't it? A little bit more pep in your step. Absolutely. <clears throat> Juice is flowing here in Joliet. 13.36 to go. Just underway in the quarter number three. Milton, the tailback. Linebacker sneaking up to the line. They'll back off here as Dedman and company get the play from the sideline. Ray Barberin looking for the outside. He cuts it, spins to the 44, pick up a three. It's going to be third down and four coming up for St. Francis. What do you got on third and four here, Coach? I'm giving it to my running back or else letting uh, Dedman have an option RPO. Nice move here by Pierre, spinning it out of the way. Uh -oh. Major Dedman, we talked about his twisted ankle, and there he is on the ground. And we're going to see... Jamal Salam come in at quarterback. It looked like he was grabbing his shin a little bit. I don't know if it's the shin or we'll use the hockey term. It's a lower body injury. <laughs> he didn't look like he was in too much pain, which leads you maybe to believe it's if he just kind of pushes on it, it would bother him. So either way, he's going to have to come out for at least one play. We'll see if Major Denman can come back, but he's been... Well, definitely now you got to get the ball to the running back because we don't have time for 
the backup in here, come in here and get loose. Jamal Salame, junior quarterback, transfer from West Hills College in California. He's played in six games. He's thrown 44%, 290 yards, a touchdown, and a pick are his numbers. A bit more of an experienced passer than Major Dedman, not quite as fleet of foot. So we will see Dwayne Milton, the tailback, most likely getting the football here, and you would think Missouri Baptist knows that. Safety's creeping up a bit, trying to play the run here on third down. He's going to throw. Looking for Williams on the quick slant, incomplete fourth down. Tyler Keene will come on to punt it away. I don't like that play just because we didn't have a chance for uh, Slam to get loosened up here a little bit. I give the ball to Milton. Trust your offensive line to get you four yards that you need. St. Francis averaging 4.8 per carry on the ground. Keen angles it left, high spiral, nicely done, rough in there, and downs it just about the five yard line. Nicely done by the St. Francis special teams unit. See John Lux for the first time in the half. See what kind of adjustments they made on halftime. Cold, windy day here in Joliet. It's game time temp about 44, but with the wind, feels like it's in the mid 30s. Baldwin, the tail back here in the pistol. Three wide receivers, right, one left. They give to Baldwin. St. Francis fills the gaps, take him down, no gain. Ball will remain at the eight yard line. You would like to see the defense hold him here, give him a three and out, and get the ball back at midfield for offense to see they're retaping uh, Deadman's ankle there on the sideline. It's good news. Or are they just trying to get it off as we see the replay of the first down run? Trying to get the tape off of that left ankle as he puts the headset on and talks to Matt McCarthy. Here's Lux. Lux is going to keep it, looking for the edge. He'll pick up another 10 yards. Coach, he's run it. I think that's his fourth carry. He's picked up about 10 or 11 yards every time. And where's he running? He's running to the edge because he can get to that side when he runs the RPO because we have nobody set that edge on either side. Lux moves the chains with his legs again. It's first down at the 17-yard line for Missouri Baptist. Both teams two and six, both teams one and three in the conference. Lux to throw. Looking long for King on the double move, but RJ Williams was the closest one there. And he looks like he pulled up a bit limp. He was er, uh, nursing a bit of an ankle injury. It looks like he's not running quite at full speed here. Second down after the big play opportunity. Well, he did. Nice, RJ did a nice job of having coverage over the top. He didn't let the guy get behind him and watch him from a safety spot. That's a good ball here. Just a little bit overthrown. But see, RJ, he's got the great position. Ray John Williams, number four for St. Francis, the junior out of Brooklyn, New York. Second down and 10. They're going to run it. End around, upfield, 30, brought down at the 34-yard line. Blake Evans there for the tackle. The carry was Lopez. Senior with the, oh, I take that back, number nine, Jordan Benavides. Turn the outside guy, the defensive end there, outside. He just cuts it up inside, gets enough for the first down. Got some athletes on the offensive side, that's for sure. <clears throat> Gonna run it to Davis this time. Evans closes off Good the pursuit. edge and down he goes after a gain of two, maybe three. RJ helps him up off the grass. Great job by Blake Evans coming from his linebacker spot, stringing that play out. Let Pursuit walk down the line of scrimmage. Watch 17. He'll string it out right there, turn it back inside, and there's a Pursuit. Grubin with the tackle inside. Second down and seven. Missouri Baptist. 
We need a turnover. We, I, it seems like we, it's been forever in a day that we've forced a turnover. We've had two interceptions today. Benavides, they fake it to him this time. And there goes the quarterback, Lux. I think Blake Evans may have just fell down. It looks like he had Lux dead to rights there as he tried to string it out left, but fell down before he could get to him. See what happened there. Just lost his footing. Yeah. Oh. And when I'm talking about turnover, I understand we've got the two interceptions, but I'm talking about sudden change, a fumble, yep. a big hit, a big pop, boom, ball on the ground, everybody goes nuts. That type <laughs> of turnover. Yeah, we need that spark, especially on a, a sustained drive like Missouri Baptist is putting on here. Started this one back at their five-yard line. All the way up to the 40 now. Five plays, I think it's six plays, about 23 yards so far. Here is Lux on the run and incomplete. I think he was looking for his tight end, Taylor, on the play, second down. He was looking for Taylor, but he was covered, so he had to go to a second read on that play. And we talked about this in pregame. It seems like every quarterback that comes in here just throw, throws dimes, just, just has his best game or his best percentage completion game. Lux in the pistol again. Baldwin is the tailback this time. Two wide receivers right, tight end left. Looking long, looking for King. Overthrew him. Oh. He had him. He had Isaiah King in between the corner and the safety on the right side, but he missed him. You've seen him be a little bit more accurate today, but he misfired on that one. Double move by King. He wanted inside, outside. He kept it up, but he stopped the route. He Ooh. stopped the route. If he keeps on running, oh. he might have a chance to on, uh, run underneath that pass. I put that one on the quarterback, but you say that was on the receiver that time. I think you're right. He just kind of clapped his own hands in frustration. Third down for Missouri Baptist. Here's Lux to throw again. Looking for the wheel route to his running back Baldwin, but he missed on that one. It hit Baldwin's hands. Would have been a pretty, it was a tough catch to make. So, Chatter from the St. Francis bench he as Baldwin goes a little, back. This is a little chippy. This is a little swinging. Every time if you got nobody outside you, you take it up the field. Baldwin will trot off as the punt unit comes on for the Spartans. He's looking to the sideline, so let's see. I believe that's Deontay Rogers to return the punt. Punt block is oh. almost there for Ruffin, but the punter gets it away. Return from the 25-yard line. There goes Rogers, spinning to the 50. Still on his feet, there he goes. Turns it upfield to the 40. Pushed out of bounds at the 33, and a huge return for St. Francis. Deontay Rogers, the freshman. Sudden field change play. Ruff looks like he could have blocked this if he would have sold out and laid out. Excuse me, watch watch this return. Spin move, gets down, what? You take it left, now you go right. Everybody gets pinned in. Look at all the people from Missouri Baptist over there. St. Francis has a chance to put one in here. They gotta fix the first down sticks as the freshman gets his congratulations from the sideline. Well done for Deontay Rogers. Here's Jamal Salam in for Major Dedman who went out with a leg injury. As Dwayne Milton behind him, the turn again will go to Dwayne. He'll bounce it outside. He's got some room. Up to the 20 and a first down for St. Francis. 13. 14 yards on the carry for Dwayne Milton. Well, Major Deadman is down on the sidelines. He got his ankle retaped and he's running sprints on the left sideline, so he sh should be back in his ball game very shortly. There's Major Deadman warming up, see if he can make a comeback here today, testing out that ankle. In the meantime, there goes Dwayne. Trying to cut it up the hash marks, but a nice gain on first down. Six yards, maybe seven for St. Francis inside the 15-yard line. Give the ball game to your offensive line. Give the ball game to your offensive line. Look at them peel, seal, peel, seal, and Dwayne takes it outside and gets another positive yardage gain. It's 
Snap back to Jamal, hand off to Milton between the guards, up to the five. That's a first down and goal for St. Francis. Nice job by the interior of the offensive line for St. Francis. Causing holes, wreaking havoc. Wentworth does a nice job. Britton does a nice job. Castillo does a nice job. Open up that hole. Look at that hole. Look at that seam. It never gets touched. It gets the second level. And off again, and there he is for a second touchdown of the game. Dwayne Milton. Milton extends the Saints' lead. It's now seven with an extra point coming up under eight minutes to go in the third quarter. The punt return sets us up, but then you give the game to what? Your offensive line. They love to run block. Every offensive line I have ever known or coached love to run block more than pass block. Holberry's extra point is true. It is 28-20. St. Francis up with eight minutes to go here in the third quarter. Was that another somersault I just saw? I didn't. Well, you keep seeing these somersaults. I, I keep well, missing. Coach Curry. I, what? <laughs> I, I, I don't know. He's doing I, somersaults? Does insurance know about this? Does our insurance company know that our head coach is doing somersaults? <laughs> the drive was four plays, 33 yards after I, the great. I, I thought I saw it in the first <laughs> half, and I didn't know if I was seeing something or. I, you, you don't want your head coach. That that's a possible concussion waiting to happen, isn't it? <laughs> well, with Ruffin. Oh. Okay. There's Dwayne on the run before the touchdown. Look at the offensive lineman. Look at Britton. Yeah, run the same play again. Let's go. Run the same play <laughs> again. Wentworth is going crazy, That's too. That's why you love offensive linemen. They know that they're beating Saint, uh, Missouri Baptist in the trenches there, and they want to keep running it. Short kick oh. into, into the wind. Return will be from the 26-yard line. But it will go backwards. What an effort. Mike Rubin, the first one to make contact. And this game is all St. Francis right now if you're talking momentum. Special teams is want to and hustle. That's all it is, want to and hustle. Get down in your coverage lanes, sit there and make the play. They ran a little poochie kick to the right side, about the 25 yard line. He runs down, forces him to take it across to the right side. Watch this. Little poochie kick, gets it in there. Look at him running down, and here comes the pursuit. In the shotgun is Lux. Down a touchdown and two. And off Baldwin. They're trying to run between the tackles with St. Francis closing the door. Chris Peters among them. There's Grubin in there right in the middle talking to the official. <laughs> Look at 48 come from his linebacker spot on this read. Boom, nope. stop. There's no forward progress. There's no gain. Stop him calling his tracks. They give him about a foot and a half. Second down and we'll say nine to go. Shift sides of the field, put the tight ends right. Pulling and goes slot left. They run it again. They go to Baldwin up to the 25. They pick up four, but this passing offense being stymied. They're going to the ground game a lot more than I thought they would. And Michael Johnson does a great job from his nose tackle spot of cutting underneath the block and making that play. We talked to Coach Curry, and he said something in the pregame. He said, we're going to invite Missouri Baptist to run the football. And watch 52 undercut this block right there, come around and make the tackle. Third down and a long five for the Spartans. Baldwin on the sweep and that goes no, nowhere. Michael Johnson, the freshman from IC Prep makes the stop. And that forces Missouri Baptist to punt. He just blew that play up. I don't know if he swimmed his guy, but he got backfield penetration in about three steps. Watch. He's in there already. He beat two guys to make that play. The other Michael Johnson. I don't think he uh, 
deserves that moniker anymore. He's the man right now. Nice play. Punt block on. Can't quite get there. Just missed it. Wobbler and return. Deontay Rogers. Here he goes again, folks. 30. He's going to go to the house. 46 yard punt return. Touchdown. And he's taken down by Ruffin in the end zone. It's all St. Francis here in the third quarter. I don't know what was said at halftime, and both teams came out kind of a little jazzed up, but the spark, the emotion that the Saints are playing, playing with right now is just outstanding. Holberry for the extra point. Do we have insurance if he gets a separated shoulder or concussed? Did I Coach miss it Curry? again? Yeah, you missed it yeah. again. We get a replay on that? Is see, the see you, you, you don't watch the game like an offensive line. You, you watch the ball. You got to watch what happens off the ball, what causes that reaction. But you got to watch that. What a game St. Francis is playing today. The most complete game they played all year. All three phases. We saw two interceptions today from the defense. A punt return touchdown from special teams. Brandon Ruffin and Dwayne Milton with two touchdowns apiece today. I'm going to tell you right now, Nick, this game is far from over. Absolutely right. It, it, it's only a two-possession game, two-score game with five and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. And this Missouri Baptist team has played some very good teams and played them tough. It was a one-point loss to Indiana Wesleyan, as you see Deontay Rogers. Boy, he caught that, that punt in a lot of traffic, though. Yep. That's nothing you teach your punt returner to do. Catch the ball with, <laughs> you know, with four or five guys around you. Without a well. fair catch, yeah. Easy there, Brandon. Same before, Missouri Baptist has played a lot of really good teams very well. One-point loss to Indiana Wesleyan, a very good team. Eleven point loss to St. Xavier. They kept that one close. That game was tied at halftime. When they played St. Xavier two weeks ago, it was 20 20 to halftime, and they only lost by 11. They were actually winning after the third quarter in that game. 18 unanswered points by St. Xavier in the fourth is what the difference was there. They played some good teams and have played them tough, honestly, tougher than St. Francis has. But St. Francis coming out today with a bit of an edge. Uh oh. Almost miscommunication there. Return here from Missouri Baptist. Nice return for them up to the 35. Out comes Jordan Benavides. And you know what's going to get the bench fired up? That was a kicker. That was a kicker making Josh the tackle. Holberry again lighting people up. Rugby player, folks. Yeah, just go back, get your tee. Okay, go back and sit on the bench. All right. See you next kickoff. And he'll get mobbed on the sideline. Watch 83. He'll come from the left of your screen. There. Gets it up the left sideline. Look at 83. But watch his tackling technique. Inside. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just come down here with me. First and 10 for the Spartans. We have been on this side of the field all quarter. Ball when he finds a seam, though. Williams takes it down after a call a 17 yard pickup up to the St. Francis 46 yard line. Throw trips receivers off right. It looks like King is here left. Lux in the shotgun. Baldwin the tailback. Lux will be throwing. Screen pass to King. But there is Hathon Hurdle. Down he goes. Three yards backwards. Who else was there? Who else was there? 52. Where does 52 play? He plays on the D line. He comes down the line of scrimmage and makes that play, gets involved in that play. Watch, look at 52 is right there. He reads it. Look at where he's at. And look at him come down the line of scrimmage and get in on that tackle. Loss of three on the play. Here we go. Second down and 13 for the Spartans. They run it again between the tackles and just not a lot of room. St. Francis fans excited here. Somebody put the cowbell right in front of our field mic, so hopefully you're enjoying that. Missouri Baptist cannot, <laughs> Missouri Baptist cannot block 52 right now. They, they, they can't block him. 
I'm, I'm serious. He, he's making every play out there. One yard on the carry, third down and 12 for Mobap. Lux again, middle of the field, had his tight end. Now this is definitely a spot that I would play for the fake. I would not put anybody back there. I'd play fake punt, safe punt all day long. Guess you're gonna throw back there. Number 86, Deontay Rogers. Apparently Deontay Rogers' mom is loving this right now as they watch on the YouTube channel. Shout out to the Rogers family. Snap is a good one. They are holding them back this time. Punt is away. High kick, but not very far. Roger's going to let that one bounce, and That's it takes a him call. to Missouri Baptist. Bounce inside the 10-yard line. 3.29 to go here in the third. It's been all St. Francis this quarter. 35-20. St. Francis was up 21-20 at halftime. They've scored 14 unanswered here. Here we go. Major Deadman back in the game. He hands it off to Dwayne Milton. Maybe a yard on the play. While Major Deadman may be in the game, he's definitely not moving very well. Doesn't make a difference. Doesn't make a difference. All right, you're good enough to play, you play. Does that take away a bit of the St. Francis offense? No. Nope. They can't move? Nope. Okay. Adrenaline. Second and nine. Wing back in the game, right side. Will the tail back. They will give to Dwayne, and why wouldn't you? All day long. But the offense, the offensive line go to work, but only a yard there. Third down and seven coming up for the Saints. This is your best running play behind your best offensive lineman. This is what this play is right now. On third and long six, short seven. You don't want to risk throwing the ball, putting the ball up in the air. You don't want to do that. Third down and seven. Three wide outs. They run it to Dwayne. Head of steam. Oh, that's very close. Short. Yeah, I think he will be about a foot short. For no, oh, well, the chains. Is, oh, they move him. Yep. First down. Oh, man, do we get a great spot. There's that cowbell you keep hearing. <laughs> we love the enthusiasm. Keep it up. We got a great spot on that because I definitely thought he was short. Give again. P.A. Barber in spinning, but can't get away from the linebacker at the end of the play. Stick made by Chris Burnham. I'm sorry. Sir Jalen Cowley, perhaps. I saw number eight there. Or a six. Number six for me is Chris Grimes, a wide receiver. Get a drive going. Deadman, the quarterback, after coming back from the injury. Three wide receivers. Ruff is slot right. Here comes pressure. Throwing. Middle of the field for Ruffin. Caught it. Oh, he missed it. He bobbled it and could not come up with it at the 45-yard line. That ball was perfect. Hit him dead look at, look red <laughs> and straight. He's like, man. Look at Major's face yep. right now. Like, oh, Brandon, what more do you want, brother? He's going to give him a big thumbs up. This is a great ball thrown with the oh wind my right goodness. in stride. Just the simple little things we talk about. If your wide receiver catch the ball with your hands, do not let it get into your body. Third and ten for St. Francis. <laughs> Milton again finds a hole and yeah, close to that first you down. Got first down, you got another one. On third, they go to Dwayne Bread and Butter. <laughs> Milton's going to come off with a sore wrist after the tackle. Let's go. Keep punching it between the chains. Keep punching it. Couldn't agree more as we tick under one minute to go here in the third quarter. 
for a Barberin's turn. He'll pick up three. All right, a couple at a time. Get behind the big boys in front. They will lead you to the promised land. They will lead you to the end zone. Keep punching it. Four at a time gets you first. Second and six for St. Francis. Corners off. Single safety deep for Missouri Baptist. 3-4 defense. They don't have to run another play here. They won't. Well, they're going to talk about the time here, I think. In the meantime, Dwayne Milton, 244 for 177 yards. That puts him third place all time on the career rushing list behind E.J. White and John Larson. Nobody's catching E.J. White. He's a couple yards shy of 3,000 for his career. I don't know why they should be talking to the back judge because the back judge is the guy who keeps the time on the field. Now he goes back to his spot and let's see what we're going to put on the 19 seconds. Yeah, yeah they don't have to run a play. They don't have to run a play. Does, I would not run a play. Let's go, O line. Here we go. Oh, they're not starting the clock, so I guess they do have to snap it. Pere is hitting the backfield. They'll go backward. Jeremiah Austin, the freshman defensive end from St. Louis, will get credit for the TFL, and that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. Saints put up 14 more to extend their lead, 35 to 20. We go to the fourth quarter. The offense has not looked better this entire season than what they look like today. We're back in a minute. You're watching Saints football on WCSF and the Saints TV network. It's the great people that are here. I mean, you don't get that everywhere else. We weave our Franciscan values into our business program. We look at respect integrity and service and compassion. We make sure our students understand that they grow properly in the long term. You have to hang on to your core values of integrity, respect, service, and compassion. We're taught the right things to do and the right ways to approach uh, problems in the business environment. Some of the problems that you deal with in business, at the end of the day, it's your character and the judgment that comes from your character that's going to get you through. Even though it's small, you're still getting a really good education and the stuff you're learning is still on par with some of the top schools in America. If you're going to make a successful kind of Welcome back to Joliet. Third down here for the Saints as we get our fourth quarter underway. 198 total yards of offense for St. Francis. They are holding the 12th most prolific offense in the country to just those are total yards, 319. That's pretty good as they average a bit more than that. But St. Francis offense at 310 yards, by far the most that they've had all year. There goes Major. He'll pick up the first down with his legs. Up to the 44-yard line. I would One thing at a coaching point for Major, right now when you get past, you get in the open field, I would not like to see him spin so much, do the spinorama move, rather than cut, make a cut with your face forward. Watch, he gets the quarterback draw. Watch here at the end because you don't know what's coming down. He'll make this spin move right there. Just cut and keep your head downfield. Here's Perey Barber on the carry. Bouncing, bouncing. To about 48. Looks like the ball came out at the end. Missouri Baptist says they have it. They stopped the clock. Looks like no. 58 came up with it for Missouri. I have not seen a. Now we got an injured St. Francis player down in the field. Is it major again? No, no it's Pierre. Oh, Barbarin down with a. He's holding his right arm. wrist. They haven't made an indication, but Missouri Baptist offense is coming on the field. The white and now the St. Francis defense is there too, so I, apparently they did. Let's see it again. Let's, go, D, get it back. Let's see if he fumbles the ball. Oh, yeah, Barbara yeah. definitely let it go. Yeah. But did you ever see an official indication? I did not indication? see an indication by the officials. Oh, well, apparently they made one to the, to the players, and it's going to be a turnover for St. Francis. Missouri Baptist has great field position here. Throwing. Pulling it up high, makes the grab. 
first down to the 25-yard line, stopped by the safety, Strama. Nice catch up with his hands. And you, you've mentioned it before for Darian Pullian. Great catcher of the ball with his hands out front. He does this, but we talked about this in the first half, too. If you're going to slide coverage to the other side of the field on King, then that's going to give Polian an opportunity for more catches. First down, Spartans knocking on the door of the red zone here. They're going to run it. And he's going oh. backwards again. Who's that man? Number 99, Chris Peters. Tackle for a loss. My boys, Chris Peters, and who was trail position? Michael Johnson. Look at 99 screen, but look at 52 run down the line of scrimmage. There's Peters, and look right here, 52. Two defensive linemen making that play 30 yards away. Jordan Benavides, the ball carrier. He went backward eight yards. Lawson, eight on the play on the stop by Chris Peters. Now you got Pullian on top of the screen. You got King down in the bottom. Pullian's getting single covered here. Safety over the top of King. Corner up tight. Check down. First, nope, near a first down on the screen pass to 21, Chris Baldwin. Only five catches coming into the uh, to this game for Baldwin. So they don't pass it to him a lot, but they're just trying to find something that works at this point. Just a little slip screen out to the left side. Does a nice job. He should run this a little bit lower, but it picks up a big chunk of yardage for the Spartans. Third down and three. Eye formation. Power eye. Give to Baldwin. He's short. Yes, he is. Maybe a yard on the play. Fourth down for Missouri Baptist. Gonna stop the clock here. There's a f no, I didn't see any laundry on the field. Why they're blowing it dead? Are they talking about the spot, perhaps? I don't know. Well, that's not from this side, Judge, to make that call in that spot because it was on the other hash. After the replay, no. Let's get the call. Oh, that's a big one for St. Francis. R.J. Williams standing there with his arms folded. I did not see a penalty flag on the field. Nope. Just like we did not get a call on the change of possession on this drive. Turn the ball and pick it. Let's go. Forget about it. Make it up. Let's go. First down after the penalty. Gift wrap here for Missouri Baptist in the red zone now. Motion left, run to Baldwin, looking for a hole between the tackles. Nothing is there. He'll pick up two yards falling forward. Mike Grubin among the tacklers. Whatever Michael Johnson ate for breakfast, I'm eating the same thing. <laughs> because he has been, all, watch 52 from his nose tackle. He's right in the middle of the line scrimmage. And he's the guy who makes his play underneath right there and makes that tackle. Let's go, defense. Look at his helmet. That's a defensive lineman's helmet. Paint coming off it, snot out of his nose. That's outstanding. 11th play of the drive is a pitch to Baldwin. He's hit at the point, stays on his feet inside the five. Looks to be a touchdown, it is. You said it, the game is not over. It's now a one possession game, 11-34. Well, it will be after the extra point. Watch him finish this run. This is just a quick toss to the right side. Gets outside contain, but watch him keep his feet moving and watch him finish this run right there. Across the line. Baldwin's eighth touchdown of the season. Kick block is on. Can they get there? Nope. Extra points good. 11.34 to go. It's an eight point lead. One possession here for St. Francis, 35 27. Man, that missed extra points kind of large I, here for Missouri. I was just going to say that, Nick, and, and we talk about this all the time. Special teams, plays on special teams are the quickest way to win and lose a football game. I know everybody likes the big, long, sustained drives and the big pass plays, but special teams are the quickest way to lose or win a football game. Five plays, 48 yards for Missouri Baptist on their way to the end zone. Hey, 
Barbarin's back here on the kickoff return team. They got Ruff back there. Look at those two guys. Who do you want to kick it to? The guy who returned the punt for a touchdown or Brandon Ruffin? Those are your choices. Pick your poison. <laughs> Deontay Rogers, the smaller of the two. Brandon Ruffin, the taller number 80. There's Brandon and Deontay ready to go. Both of them saying, give me the football. One of them will get a chance. It'll be Ruffin if he can find it. All right, here he goes from the 16-yard line. Cuts it back and go left, go left. Oh, he's got a little room if he can sprint out there. He's running out of gas here. 32-yard line is where he'll go. See the replay. People don't understand when the ball hits the ground on a kickoff, it upsets the timing of your kickoff return team. That looked like it was supposed to be set up for a return right. He went all the way to the right side and come back across left. It was that defensive unit? All right, let's go, line. Here we go. Number 17, Blake Evans. 47, Mason DeLong. 48, Grubin. As the run goes to Milton. 12 yards and a first down. They are having fun today. Definitely a little bit, uh, feeling it a little bit, a little bit with the mojo. Looking for their first win here at Memorial Stadium this year. They're only up by one possession, 11 minutes to go in the game. Blitz shown by Missouri Baptist will bring a few. They blitz right at Milton, and the ball's on the ground again, but picked up by Denman. And he'll get it back to the line. That's the third time St. Francis has put it on the ground. And we can say it's the first time we've played in a little bit colder weather. You know, I know they practiced in the snow Wednesday, Thursday. Let's see if this ball comes out here, Nick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that ball definitely stripped, laying on the ground. Second down and 10. Quarterback draw. Defensive line all over it for Missouri Baptist. He'll go back a yard. Timing wasn't good on that because nobody took the fake that he was actually going to throw the ball. He kind of sped that up a little bit. Look, he looks back there. He never gets a, a chance of defensive lineman to get upfield and get yourself a seam. Third and 11 now. St. Francis, if you're going to win a game, you can't give him a chance to tie it here. Oh, Milton stopped in the back, but nice second burst up the midfield. He'll pick up four, but still going to be fourth down and five. Tyler King going to come on and kick it away. Now, most of the time he kicks the ball left. Left-footed kicker kicks the ball left. Missouri Baptist is setting up their kick returner on the left hash. Nice job by Milton for get four or five yards out of that. Nick Brown back to return for Missouri Baptist. Nice spiral again. Bounce. St. Francis is on there. It. Oh! <laughs> it hopped back right into the bread basket of a Spartan, and he's like, oh, look what I found. He dropped right to the ground. Nice heads up play by Rodney Smith for Mobap. 9.05 to go. Here comes John Lux and company. Looking to tie of the game here. John Lux is over 2,000 yards in the season. He is the ninth. He ranks ninth in total offense individually in the NAIA. Over 2,200 yards. If there's anyone that could drive the length of the field here and do it quickly. John Lux, along with his wide receiver, Isaiah King, who, to the Saints' credit, has been kept mostly quiet, just five for 52. Or, pardon me, just four for 31. But here's Chris Baldwin into the secondary and more, all the way past midfield, up to the 41-yard line. That's about a 42-yard run on first down, exactly what St. Francis did not want. And Michael Johnson was not in his nose tackle spot, and they ran right in the A-gap to the left side, and they left the offensive guard. Here we go, D! First and 10 for 
first down up to the 41 yard line, 42 yards on the carry for Chris Baldwin. That was the longest running play of the game so far for Missouri Baptist. Looking long, but he up is Isaiah King and incomplete. A bit slow to get up. It looks like RJ Williams, yeah, number four. St. Francis is doing a great job on Isaiah King tonight or today. RJ does a great job from safety. Look at the ground he covers. He's playing free safety in the middle of the field. Look at the ground he covers to get over to get on top of this route and bust it up. Second down for Missouri Baptist, St. 41, the yard line. Michael Johnson back at the nose tackle. Rushing three. Lux is going to keep it. Blake Evans is there. Hit from behind and down he goes. Gain of one. Guess who? Michael Johnson. He is becoming a playmaker, especially today. He gets beat on this, but watch him pursue. Look at it. He's behind the play three yards and comes back and makes that play. Third down coming up from Missouri Baptist. Eight minutes to go. Keeping it is Lux. He will not get there. Two yards shy, fourth down coming up, but they're gonna have to go for it here. Yeah, they're, they're, they definitely ran that play because they knew this was fourth down territory. They knew they were gonna go for it on fourth down if they made it or not. Saints faithful out here today. That's got to come from the sideline because you got the, the quarterback did not call a timeout. So the sideline, if you're going on fourth down, you got to call a timeout if you're Missouri Baptist. This now is, they have to punt. No, not necessarily. This okay, is still yeah. within the 40. Deontay Rogers, the freshman, he's already took one to the house today. Kick with the wind. They do punt it away. High punt. There will be no Get away. Get here. away. Fair catch. Call oh, man. Four. I do they tackle them. There's got to be a penalty. They tackled them. No protest from the Saints. So, you know, I take that back. Coach Curry is protesting hard. He definitely gave the fair catch signal yes. way early. Yep. Plenty of time. Look at Coach Curry's. No. What do you mean no? He said the referee saying no. That's ridiculous. Look at he's got it up there. Look at this. Catches it. They tackle him. I mean, what's the it doesn't make a difference how hard you tackle him. You cannot touch him when he makes the fair catch sign. That's, the, that's exactly why they put the rule in place. Exactly. <laughs> All right, St. Francis has it at their own 12. Trying to put the game away here. Six and a half to go. They run it on first down and they pick up nothing. Why don't you turn off that field, Mike? There's we got a fight breaking out in the stands here. We don't want to pick up any language. St. Francis, all the players looking up into the stands here too, but the players on the field are ready to go. Game getting Second a little down. chippy all yeah, of a sudden. Even here in the St. Francis stands. Here's Milton turning upfield, and he'll pick up you know about what it, four. You know what it was, and you don't know this? I don't. They're arguing over whether Kit Kat is better than Reese's with well, the Halloween. Well, it is that time of year. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm saying that's what the argument. It's not even a, a, an argument. I mean, it's I, Reese's by a mile. It's Reese's by a total mile, especially to put them in the fridge or the fridge. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, that's, that's a good call there. 
third down and five. There's the snap and the turn. Nope, it's going to be Deadman to throw down the middle. Oh, Way man. Over there of Ruffin. And now they're going to have to punt. Oh, man. Again, St. Francis has ran the ball for well over 200 yards today. They came in the last four games averaging over 280 yards rushing the last four games. If you run that ball, you take off another 30, 35 seconds I of clock time. Agree. Five and a half remains. Keen gets the punt off. He put all he had into that one. Nice punt. Nice boy. tackle on the other side. Luke Mander. Is that, uh, oh, no, Ruffin. It was 80. I'm sorry. I thought there. it was 90. It was 80. Uh, Brandon Ruffin with the special teams tackle. Use that track speed. Go down there and get that guy. Boy, we got... People arguing over candy bars, <laughs> and we got a little chippy. Look at Ruffin come down here and make that play. Kind of makes me want to get back out there and coach again. Nick. You know, this is one of those like it? jazzy games here. It kind of, kind of gets the blood pumping a little bit. It's like we're all calmed down here in the stands, thankfully. And here we go. Screen it out left side. Spinning to turn a loss of one into a gain of five. That's a nice play by Polian on the outside there. They're going to race back to the line. Chasing eight, 517 to go. You got tons of time if you're Missouri Baptist. Oh, yes. You're only trailing by one touchdown and a two point conversion. Second down with a long five, short six years. They approach midfield. Looking for a little motion there. And finally, the tight end obliges. There's the snap to Lutz. Turn to Baldwin. Nope, not Baldwin. Runner is Lopez. Up by a yard. Third down coming up now. Randa comes down and makes it. He scrapes over the top for his linebacker spot. Number 36 comes from outside and gets an arm in there and forces the running back back inside. Watch 36, top of your screen. Watch right there, forcing them back inside. There's nowhere to go. Benavides, the ball carrier on the play. My apologies on that. Number nine, not eight. Third down again. Do they throw or do they run? Oh, well, they're off sides. The Titans line up off sides. <laughs> Throwing, middle of the field, and incomplete looking for the tight end across the middle. Tried for the one-headed grab. Couldn't get it. Fourth down, 4.08 to go. I say you punt it here. I say you go for it here. You think so? The defense has proven that they could stop him. It is a one possession game, 4.08 to go. They're going to go on fourth from midfield. Keep an eye out for number 12, Isaiah King. Conference receiver. They throw. It's picked off. Picked off by DeLong. And the return is on to the 30, 25, 20. The tight end makes the tackle. The third interception of the game. And there's a penalty flag for a little extracurricular activity after the play. He never saw him. Lux never saw him. Now it looks like somebody's down the sideline for Missouri Baptist. Looks like Martin. Paddock, I believe. Oh, now they're calling They're calling the... 89, the that's the tight end, Taylor. Okay, take a look at the pick again. Yeah, he, he was looking. He, he, never saw, he never saw him. He was looking for the crossing and route. see what happens to Taylor at the end of this play. He's the one who makes the tackle. Not there, but at the end. Here he comes. And rolled up there at the end. Oh, his, his arm? Don't want to speculate, but he yeah. landed hard on his, like, shoulder blade and arm. Now the medical people are going over and they're attending to him. Oh, he passed back up. So as great as John Lux has been this season, he has been prone to the interception. 14 touchdowns, but now 15 interceptions. He is very prolific, but he has thrown for over 2,000 yards, but also prone to that big pick at the end of the game. Under four minutes to go. St. Francis looking to ice it here. 
another touchdown probably puts this one out of reach for Missouri Baptist. So a big defensive stand coming up here for Mobap. And there's the quarterback, John Lux. Getting a bit of a he's like, pep talk here. He, he's, he's telling his coach, he said, I never saw him. He said, I never saw him. Was there a penalty? Because they moved it all the way back to the 35. Here's Milton right up the middle. He's going to go to the house. Dwayne Milton, 36-yard touchdown, his third of the game, and that should do it for St. Francis. A career game for Dwayne Milton on the ground. He never got touched. Not once. What a hole by the offensive line opened this up. He never got touched. St. Francis did get called for an unsportsmanlike conduct before that play. But it didn't matter. It just added 15 yards to the Dwayne Milton run. Holberry's kick is good. 42-27. And again, extracurricular activities in the stands. Unfortunate. 350 to go. Yeah, thanks, Brian. And we're going to turn down because that scuffle right in front of our field, Mike. We don't want to pick up anything that nobody needs to hear. Dwayne Milton, 29 carries, now over no, 30 carries, now over 200 yards and three touchdowns today. Approaching that career, uh, or I should say season record for yards in a year. He owns that record, 1,089 yards last year, which set a school record. And with 236 yards here today, if I do some quick math, he's at, let's see, about uh, 980. So he's about 100 yards shy of that season record for St. Francis. Dave LeKenna out there to calm everybody down. A squib kick. Picked up by one of the upbacks here from Mobap. He'll turn it upfield. Oh! He'll end. To the 41 yard line he goes. St. Francis needs one more stop here. I like the enthusiasm, the excitement that <laughs> the, the Saints have played with today. Why don't we see that Dwayne Milton score one more time? Look at the, the look at the hole right there. There's nobody touched him. He gets to the second level and he just uses his speed to take it to the house. But great job by the offensive line today. First down for Lux in Missouri Baptist. Still looking, looking. Here comes pressure, though, from Peters. Throws it on the run and pretty much throws that one away. Stops the clock at 339. With his three touchdowns today, Dwayne Milton jumps one, two, three, four, five, six spots in the career rushing touchdown list. Now at fifth place behind John Larson, Anthony Hubert, E.J. White, White, and Connor Krish. He's got 17 touchdowns. Second down here for Missouri Baptist. Throwing, out route, beautiful nice. ball incomplete for a first down. Goes to Nick Brown. They ran a little flood route that time. The first guy runs a little outside. He just runs a corner route. Gets in between the safety and the corner. Nice ball. Here's Lux again. Inside route. Nice, nice catch. Diving catch by Isaiah King. Nine-yard pickup, about a yard shy, maybe two of the first down. 3.16, clock winding here. The waning minutes of the game. Missouri Baptist trying to form a comeback inside route. Oh! Another beautiful My catch goodness. by King. Look at the hands by Isaiah for a first down. First down, here we go. Throwing again to the outside. Has pulling, but he threw it right at Haython Hurdle. Underthrown ball, he'll slide down at the 20. The fourth interception of the game for St. Francis and John Lux. While 
lighting everybody up this year, just having a, a down game. Four interceptions now. That one, it just wasn't a well-thrown ball. That one just under wasn't a well-thrown ball, and he didn't see the underneath coverage. He locked on his receiver. He thought he just undercut the route sitting right there. First interception of the season for Hathon Hurdle, the cornerback. Major Denman, we're going to get a solid dose of Dwayne Milton here for the next three minutes. Cuts it up, and he'll pick up 10 and a first down for St. Francis. And now this game's going to get a little chippy. Yep. So if I was the officials right now, I'd stop this. I'd go to both benches and say, that's enough. No more of this, gentlemen. No more. Coming up after the game, we'll get a quick chat with head coach Joe Curry. And I imagine a bit of a chant behind him. I'm very much looking forward to that. St. Francis trying to milk as much clock as they can right now. Milton. Three yards. But more importantly, I was going to say the clock will tick, but looks like we're going to get a timeout here by Missouri Baptist. Oh, there must have been a lot of talk between St. Francis I, 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 and Andre Chandler. I, 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 I go back to this. That both teams were in close quarters at yeah. halftime. Yeah. We haven't seen it here at Memorial Stadium. Something was said because both teams came out jacked up. They really were. <laughs> after halftime. I'm so right coach, now, yeah. th th this is coaching right here. Right now, if I'm Coach Curry, I tell my guys, zip it, play football, that's it. Coach Curry will get a word with him as this game wraps up. Time out here, 42-27 the score. You think they're just a little bit jacked up for all the uh, Halloween candy, the sugar high? You know what? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Probably. I can't think of any other reason. You know, you, you take a look at it. It's, it's been a big week here, right? You got Halloween. You got the first snowfall of the year, right? And our first win at home. I, I just say something is... is you know, I'm just saying. Second down and eight. Clock will start on the snap. I'm going to put a few more seconds on the clock. They want two minutes in a second. Now back to Denman to give to Milton, looking for a crease. Not much there, but more importantly, the clock will wind. Right? Whoa, whoa, time out. <laughs> right, not, right now I get Milton out of the game. Yeah, right no. now I pull him right out of the game because this game is still a little chippy. I get him out of the game right now. He's got three games left in his career here at St. Francis. Number one, Dwayne Milton. When it comes down to it, he'll be talked about as one of the very few at the top of the running backs list of guys like Anthony Hubert, John Larson, Connor Krish, John McGee, and Dwayne Milton. He does own the season yardage record most yards in a season by a running back 1089 he most likely breaks it because he's only about 100 yards away we got two more games to go record he set last year also has the record for most yards in a game that was against lawrence tech a few weeks ago 256 that's a good day's work not too bad Today, 33 for 251. So he needs seven more yards, and he breaks the all-time school record for yards in a game today. He actually has seven, five yards, six yards. I can do math. That's my Providence Catholic math again. There you go. Snap to Milton. There's the carry, and there's the record. And more. 
Dwayne Milton will go to the house for touchdown number four. 65 yards and another touchdown for Dwayne Milton. And he's over 300 yards rushing today. Clearly, obviously, a school record. And with that run, I believe he breaks the school record in yards in a year. I have been here. Extra point is good. And seen the first foot. I seen the first football game ever played <laughs> here at St. Francis, back when Gordy Glassby was here. I the. The great running backs, and I don't use that term loosely, that I have seen play here for the Fighting Saints, I'm talking Johnny Larson. I'm talking other, you know, Johnny Larson's the first guy because uh -huh. he was great in high school. He was great when he played here. But just to, to be in that rarefied air, that company that you have toked the ball for over 300 yards and four touchdowns in a single game, is mind-boggling to me. And with that run, he breaks the school record for yards in a game now with 316 and yards in a season with 1,168. And coach, we got two games to go. The best to do it here in St. Francis, Dwayne Milton. You know, maybe there's something to be said for this activation thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We always. My goodness. Whatever he's, whatever they're doing to him, I want it done you know, to me. My goodness. Whatever underwear Michael Johnson was wearing today, <laughs> I'm getting that same color. Whatever activation that Dwayne is doing, I'm, I'm doing that because they've been unbelievable today. Squib kick. Picked up by Benavides. And he'll break one. Benavides. Get him, kicker. Get him, kicker. Oh. Get him, kicker. Oh, Barry can't quite get there. Benavides. Returns it for a touchdown for Moe's Missouri Baptist. It just gives the ball right back to St. Francis. Well, now, the, now you get you the most exciting down, play yeah. in, uh, <laughs> is the uh, onside kick. Right. People, I'm, I'm telling you, if, if you want an entertainment, whatever you want entertainment-wise today, yep. you come to this football game, you got it. You got interceptions. You got... Huge rushes over 60, 70 yards. We've seen kick returns like this one from both teams. And we saw long touchdown passes to Brandon Ruffin. He has two today. It's had it all. We had a feeling that we would have a lot of points today. We've had 83 points. <laughs> See, those people are nice. They're like, oh, my God, look at the guy on the left. He's like, oh, my God, that's a record? <laughs> and look at the dog. He's still here. He's, he's like a hero. Doesn't mind the cold weather, does he? You know, he's got fur. Like my wife the other night. She, she, says, she has fur, too? Well, that's another story. <laughs> but she says, I, I'm going to turn on the heat. You know, I said, I don't like the heat. You know, she says, well, dog's cold. I said, my pup's got fur. I don't think my pup's, you know, my pup's laying on a couch next to me watching TV. He's, he's cold. I said, I don't think he's cold. Onside kick here from Missouri Baptist. Colin Law is the kicker. This is the first attempt at an onside kick this year. Nice hop. Oh, out of bounds. I'm not, I'm not sure he came down in bounds. The flag will come out for the illegal procedure. He got the great second bounce. Watch how high this goes, because he hits the, what, tip of the football goes straight up. If he had another yard, yep. good effort by Missouri right there. He just can't stay in bounds. Pointed the wrong way, but that's okay. <laughs> Couple of the second stringers in. I suppose they're just going to kneel this one down here, aren't they? You would think. 
Yeah, there they go, lining up in the victory formation. Coach, you're wearing the V hat. You wanted that victory? I, I told you what. I, you got it. I did. I brought it out. I busted out. I have a playoff hat, too, for the high school. I do. I have a superstitious. St. Francis will go 3-0 and in their games against Missouri Baptist. The last one in 2016. Timeout called by Missouri Baptist. Can't take him with you, I suppose. Can't take him with him. Plus, this, this victory, what this does for St. Francis. You know, let's take a look at the remaining schedule that we got for the Saints. After this, we go to St. Ambrose, and then we end up here, the last home game, against St. X. It just makes practice better. It makes dinner better. It makes, you know, watching films better. It makes, Reese's taste a lot better. It ma huh? makes the Reese's taste a lot better. It just the whole nine yards. And, and then you can just say, and I always go back to this point with this young team, because there's so many freshmen, sophomores, and underclassmen on this roster. See, you are making progress. So you are getting better. And now I've got something, that, you know, physically I can say, see, all this hard work we put in, it's starting to pay off. It's paying off. Okay, we saw a, a, a you know, emergence of, of a guy coming out, Michael Johnson from the nose tackle <laughs> Poor spot. Poor Major Denman, sorry to interrupt you. That kid could barely run out there. <laughs> but you, you better believe he'll be out there for the kneel down. He earned it. Major Denman took a big step forward today, Coach. Yes, he did. Wait and kneel. And He's trying to get it down to 40. Yeah, that, <laughs> they may have to kneel it down one more time, think, but yeah. depends how the referees are feeling, I suppose. St. Francis will bump up to three and six and an even two and two in the MSFA. Mobap will fall to two and seven and one and four in the conference. Everyone's still chasing the two at the top, though. St. Xavier and St. Ambrose. Man. They do have to take one more knee. Let's go ahead and do it anytime here, boys. And that'll do it here in Joliet. Your final 49 to 34. A huge offensive outburst by St. Francis today. 463 total yards, 351 on the ground, 112 through the air. Dwayne Milton, though, is your story. 34 carries, 316 yards, and four touchdowns. And with that last 65-yard touchdown run, it broke two records. The season rushing record and yards in a game. Both will be school records now as we await Coach Curry and we'll get some post-game thoughts from him. We'll see if he wants to address his team first or us first. And it wasn't even like, you know, guys who get 300-yard rushing games. It's like sometimes those are stats games, you know what I mean? You know, where the game's out of hand or game's out of reach and, and the guy's going for a record. It wasn't that case today. You know, Dwayne got him within the course of the ball game, within the course of the game plan, and in the course of running, running hard. Yeah, 34 carries, so he averaged 9.3 yards per touch. Also a, gr also a great story, two catches for 107 yards and two touchdowns for Brandon Ruffin. He came in with just 244, so he added 50% to that just uh, today in one game. One of them an 88-yard touchdown, his first of the season earlier in the game. Major Denman with his step forward, just three for seven, 112 yards, but he looked a lot more comfortable. But I tell you what, what, what that game did for Ruff too, he was a monster on special teams, on kick coverage, on punt coverage. He, he did an outstanding job on that. 49-34, your final score here today. Missouri Baptist numbers, pretty good day by Lux, but the, the, the turnovers really hurt his team. He was 15 for 31, 212, two touchdowns, four interceptions, though. Chris Baldwin averaged 6.1 yards per carry, 15 carries, 91 yards, and two touchdowns. A quietly nice game for Chris Baldwin for Missouri Baptist. John Lux also seven carries for 59 yards. Kendall Davis, eight carries for 32 yards. Darian Pullian, Anthony Taylor, Isaiah King, all with four uh, catches today. 
91 yards for Darian Pullian, 62 for Taylor, 31 for King. St. Francis defense did a nice job. As we go down to head coach Joe Curry, first off coach, what the heck happened at halftime? Oh my God, you guys came up fired up. Um, you know, our, our guys are, you know, I told them at halftime that, you know, they got the, we've been in every game at halftime this whole year. You know, you know it was up to us to try to change the narrative on, you know, winning and losing. And, you know, to their credit, they came out in the second half and, you know, they, they did some great things in the second half. And um, we, I think we had a lot of fun. You guys got to listen to this song. Oh, yeah. We haven't had in a while, so yep. hold on a minute. <laughs> Sounds good, Coach. Um, that sounds good. But, no, we, uh, you know, our, our guys are resilient, you know, and, you know, as, as bad as the year has been at times, our guys kept fighting and they kept on doing great things. And, you know, that's a credit to them. Um, you know, I told them this morning, I said, listen, your college football career is only so short and it goes by fast. And uh, you, you can't afford to let any opportunity slip through, and they did not do that today. Um, I, I did tell them at halftime that, you know, if, if we won, you know, that we could pot a later on. So. Is that with an H, Coach? I mean, uh, pate, yeah. all right. You know, <laughs> yeah, we're going to pate. Nice. Yeah. Outstanding. <laughs> and, and two, two, two things I want to ask you. Yeah. Number one, I, you know, Milton was just incredible. Ruff got off the snide a little bit. Yeah. Michael Johnson was just a monster from the line spot today. He was, yeah, he's, he was, he was all over the place. Yeah, he did a great job. And, and uh, you know, Michael's a – he's a strong kid. You know, he, he's pound for pound one of our strongest kids on the team. And, you know, you can see that definitely in the running game today. And and we just kept rolling with him. We just – you know, he was making plays in there, so we kept rolling with him. Usually he rotates in there with Flaycheck, But, you know, we just kept with him today, and he, he responded by making some great plays. That's what you want to see. You know, you give guys opportunities to make plays. And, you know, there's been at times where we haven't made those, but it was great to see today where we made those plays there at the end to get a, get a win. And, and the other thing, I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm concerned for your health because I don't know if I saw this right. I have to look at the – You're concerned you know, for what? You cut out on me. W w I'm concerned with your health because oh. I don't know – you know, I had to watch it on film again. But some of your technique on your somersaults, tell, tell me about that. Well, you know, I told the offense, if we – you score a touchdown, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going to celebrate with you. I'm going to do a somersault with you. So – you know, everybody that came over, it's somersault time. And I'm only 41, man. I'm not that old. Well, but, I, I, but am I am old. I am a little bit decrepit. I'm not going to lie to you. To so I, it I, takes me a while to get up. But I was worried about being concussed. I was worried about shoulder going out. But that, that was pretty good form. <laughs> not sure if you expected six somersaults today, though. I'll, you know what? I'll do 12 of them. It doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, Dwayne Milne, I'm not sure if you were aware, but 312 yards. I was not aware. And he broke. He wanted to take himself out in the last play. Well, with that play, he <laughs> broke two school records. Records, the season rushing record and the uh, most yards in a game record for the school. So I'm glad he was in there for that last run. Well, I told him he tried to substitute somebody in, and I said, no, uh-uh. I said, I, want, I don't want to punt. I want to end this thing. And he goes, okay, I got you, coach. Now, I didn't think he'd take one to the house, but, you know, I thought for sure he'd get a first down because I didn't want to punt there at the end. I didn't want another punt. It seemed like that offensive line was happy to oblige as well. They said they just wanted to keep running the football, didn't they? Yeah, that's all they ever want to do, you know, which is good. I mean, they, you know, they take a lot of pride. And when we were up by, uh, I believe it was before Dwayne's second to last touchdown, we were up by two scores and we got the ball after a turnover. And I just said, hey, put it on you guys to end it. Just don't even think about it, just end it. And they did, you know, so that was that was a, a very good positive. Well, we're not even going to think about next week because I think you guys deserved uh, to celebrate this one. It was a heck of a performance offensively, defensively. Deion Rogers with a punt return touchdown. So your special teams got in on the party. It was a lot of fun. Uh, probably one of the most fun games we've had here in a long time. So great game, Coach. Well, it was fun to be a part of. Thank you guys for everything. Coach Joe Curry down on the field with his post-game thoughts. Uh, what about you here, Coach? What do you think? I, I thought overall, top to bottom, inside out, Offense, defense, special teams, by far the best, most complete game that the Fighting Saints have played all year long. Four interceptions from the defense, a punt return from special teams, six offensive touchdowns, four from Dwayne Milton. Let me correct myself, 316 yards, not 312. Now the all-time leader in yards in a season and yards in a game. Heck of a performance. We saw some records fall and finally on the board, the first win for St. Francis here at home in the season. Next game coming up is on the road, the final road trip of the year. It's against St. Ambrose out in Davenport, Iowa. We'll have the call on uh, 88.7 WCSF. You can find the link at GoFightingSaints.com. And then we'll wrap up the year against St. Xavier. That is a home game on November 16th. Also a 1 o'clock kickoff here at uh, Memorial Stadium.
next two games for Missouri Baptist. Robert Morris at home down in Crevecourt, uh, Missouri, and then to a Walsh, Ohio. Uh, at home for Missouri Baptist, their final two games as well. Well, guys, it was a fun one here today. Great job by everyone. Thanks to the TV crew here, Brennan and Jessica, and the rest of the, uh, the boys here. Appreciate all your hard work, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Your final score here in Joliet, the Saints winner, 49-34. to 34. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody. Take care.